Fours Action News. The Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers have a dynamite quarterback and leader in number 12, Terry Bradshaw, and it helps to have a man like that one, 82, John Stallworth on the receiving end. It helps, too, to have maybe the greatest wide receiver of them all, number 88, Lynn Swan. But always helping even more is the great steel curtain of the champions, led by that man, number 75, Mean Joe Green. The Patriots are a powerhouse team, too, with their own telling quarterback, Steve Grogan, and the all-world tight end, Russ Francis. And Grogan at quarterback gives you that extra dimension. He can run. So it's the Steelers against the Pats on Monday Night Football. 20 seconds to air. Stand by, all cameras. Ready. Stand by in videotape. Ready. Stand by slow mo. Ready. Stand by open your mics on the field. Ready. Stand by in graphic. Ready with your open super. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. And roll tape. Roll Three, two, one. Take tape. Massachusetts, the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers against the AFC Eastern champion New England Patriots. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Dotson, who invites you to test price the luxurious 280ZX. It costs... We've got the beer. Again, everyone, and welcome to the home of the New England Patriots for this, the official start of our 1979-1980 ABC Monday Night Football season. And what an opener we've gotten. A lot along the way, too. We'll have three Thursday night specials. One Sunday night special, the first Thursday night special. This Thursday at Denver, the opposition, the Los Angeles Rams, still smarting from that upset yesterday at the hands of the Oakland Raiders. But now, tonight, what a matchup. The Super Bowl, Pittsburgh Steelers champions against perhaps the most offensive-minded team in football, the New England Patriots. And it's a supercharged team, these Patriots, emotionally. Why? Because Darryl Stingley, who suffered that fateful collision August 12th a year ago with Jack Tatum, has come back home for the first time since that tragic accident. And you'll be meeting him exclusively at halftime. In the meantime, there is some internal discord on the Patriots, and it's only right to recognize it. Remember, some two weeks plus ago, they traded Leon Gray, the brilliant all-pro offensive tackle, to the Houston Oilers. I asked the new head coach, Ron Earhart, if he were in favor of the trade and what impact that trade had upon the efficiency of the Patriots' offensive line, this is what he told me. I was reluctant to make the trade. Of course, I'm the head football coach. I'm selfish. I didn't want to break up a combination we had up front, uh, the combination that led the NFL last year in total offense. Uh, as far as uh, how much it's going to impair us, Howard, uh, I can put it this way. Uh, when you take a rookie and try to replace an all-pro, it, it just isn't done overnight. So that's the Leon Gray situation as Ron Earhart, the head coach, sees it. There may be a quarterback problem, too, on the Patriots. What a delight to have back the great expert to discuss that problem, Dandy Don Merritt. Oh, it's good to be back. I really am happy to be here. It's 10 years of ABC's Monday Night Football. Son of a gun. Nice to be here. Now then, that quarterback situation, that is a little bit tough, but maybe not as tough as we're trying to make it. Steve Grogan is the number one quarterback. He had knee surgery last year. And they're saying, well, maybe he won't be the running threat that he's been in the past. Well, I don't know. I know this, that's, that he's got a couple of good backups. Matt Cavanaugh is a young player, and so is Tom Owen that can both throw. We heard a rumor that 
if things don't go well in the first half, particularly quarterback, that they're going to substitute one of those guys, and they call Owen and Kavanaugh about the same. So the only thing I can say is it's going to be a fun year. Now, then Frank, outside of Pittsburgh, having world championship, great quarterback, great coaching, and all that sort of stuff, what else they got working? I guess we should kick off. They don't really have a major problem. If anything, they have minor injuries at their cornerback position, and they may have a little bit of a trouble uh, at the beginning of the season with their offensive line or right tackle there. They're hurting just a little bit. But believe me, it's nothing serious. When you have Terry Bradshaw coming off the best year he's ever had, 28 touchdown passes, he became truly a leader, and he's been that over the past few years. But I don't believe anyone fired the football in a lot of years like Terry did at the end of last season. He was really a remarkably gifted quarterback at the end of the year. And, of course, you have Franco Harris. And while New England has the great offense, number one in the NFL, well, Pittsburgh gave up the fewest points in the NFL last year. A classic matchup, if you will. We say that many times, but this one happens to be. And we'll be back for the kickoff right after this. Isn't it a beauty? Those are the numbers on Steve Grogan, the quarterback of the New England Patriots. There has been a question about Steve Grogan during the preseason. He has not been the Grogan of last year. He came off of knee surgery in January. He appears to be all right. The knee appears to be okay, but the offense has not moved all that well into this young man. He has had good support from backup quarterbacks Matt Cavanaugh and Tom Owen. These two teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the New England Patriots, champions of their divisions, the Patriots, however, knocked off by Houston in the playoff rounds. Of course, you know about the Steelers. They went all the way to win the Super Bowl, their third Super Bowl victory under head coach Chuck Knoll. They beat the Dallas Cowboys 35-31. to The Steelers will be kicking, and they will trot out a new kicker for the first time in eight years. Matt Barr, a sixth-round draft pickup from Penn State, has replaced Roy Jarella. And Howard has already told you about the explosive offense of the New England Patriots. They have a tremendous amount of speed. And when a Grogan is right, they have the added dimension of an extra runner in that backfield. He rambled for over 500 yards last year. Second successive great running year for Grogan. He has a habit of getting it done. He doesn't do it with a lot of finesse, but somehow it happens. Deep goes number 35, Alan Clark. Dropping back with him is Rick Sanford. A pair of rookies are deep. Alan Clark, tremendous athlete, Northern Arizona, a 10th round draft pick, and Barr has it underway. Kicks it high. It'll be short. It'll be Alan Clark at the eight. Good haul. Good haul. Oh, a big oh. opening for Alan Clark. Clark out over the 45-yard line, and it was the kicker, Matt Barr, who turned Alan Clark to the outside. Offensively, we told you about Steve Grogan. He will be back there with Andy Johnson, another 500-yard gainer, and Sam Cunningham. He was the leading rusher last year. The wide receivers, they have speed. Number 29, Harold Jackson, and 86, Stanley Morgan. As you look at the offensive line, the question mark, of course, on the left side. That's where Leon Gray has departed. That tandem of him and Gray was great for years. Gray now at Houston, Dwight Wheeler, first-year man out of Tennessee State, is filling the shoes. He wears number 62. First and 10. Handoff goes to Andy Johnson. Andy Johnson racked up in the middle of the Steeler line. Number 76 was in there. It was John Banizak, and you see the rest of them. L.C. Greenwood, of course, perhaps the best along that front four. If you have better linebackers, I don't know where you'll find them. And, of course, the secondary, a superb secondary, but they cannot afford injuries tonight because they really do not have good backups. J.T. Thomas is hurting. And so, Grogan brings up the New England Patriots. Second down, nine to go. Gain of about a half a yard. The motion man, Harold Jackson. Play action. Grogan rolls to the left, tries to isolate a receiver. He does. It's Harold Jackson, and Jackson close to the first down. Steeler territory at the 45-yard line. Grogan, by the way, Don Howard calling his own plays tonight. That's got to be fun. Something that the Patriots initiated because they were taking up too much time messengering the play out onto the field, and they found themselves ready to start the play just five seconds 
before they had to dispatch the ball from center to quarterback, and thus they couldn't audibleize. So much for that. Five rookies on the Patriots team, one of whom is the youngster you saw with the brilliant kick run on the opening kickoff. Alan Clark, the rookie from Northern Arizona. Didn't have a big-time college program or coaching behind him, but he has impressed Bucko Kilroy very much, the general manager and the astute player evaluator of the Patriots. Inches short, perhaps six inches. The two tight ends are in. They are enormous. Don Hasselback, Russ Francis, Cunningham. Couldn't find it inside. Sprinted to the outside. Gets the first down. Goes down in the arms of Jack Lambert. He could have broken off for a big gainer, but he gets the first at the 41. Sam Cunningham coming off two consecutive healthy years. The leading rusher last year with over 750 yards. Sam Bam. He did it. They went over a Wheeler that time, so at least that offensive line, the first time in a third and short, they're going to check Wheeler out. They got the first down. Interesting ways the football works. Lynn Swan, the outstanding receiver for the Steelers, was a roommate of Sam Cunningham at USC several years ago. Now they are opposition tonight. Krogan to the air. Drop back. Look out. He gets pounded just as he releases the ball. It was short. And you saw the blitz. Jack Ham in there, number 59. Steve Furness is in there pretty close, too, Frank. He's the guy that's really kind of come in there and pushed the guys around, made them realign that thing. Uh, Dwight White's got a little, I guess he's nursing a sore ankle, but Furness is really the player. He's coming in doing a job. He's a great pass rusher. White, incidentally, probably will see some action tonight. That remains to be seen. Depends on the flow of events. But he's not that damaged that he can't get in there if they need him. Robin Cole comes out. Wayne Woodruff comes in at one cornerback to give them five secondary men. That is for the Steelers. Second down and ten. They're thinking pass. They get run. Andy Johnson, and he's swarmed under there. Lambert, of course, number 58. Great all-pro middle linebacker. You'll see him all over the football field. Andy Johnson, of course, Andy, as you well know, was a quarterback at Georgia. Had a big year. Patriots made him a running back. Had a big year in 76. Injured in 77. Came back last year. He was akin to his old self. Fine player. On third down and nine. No huddle. Grogan had called a couple of plays. He told he's calling his own plays. Oh, boy. He cuts oh, all the Steelers, maybe, and not the right defense. He goes to Russ Francis. Francis has the ball inside the 20 at the 18. Oh, that's nice. Really a good example. We've talked about his mobility, but he's also a good, strong guy. Moving Brown up in there, picked out Russ Francis. He made Donnie Shell number 31, commit a little bit because they know he can run, too. Picked up a big first down. He has that added dimension, as we mentioned before, being able to run. You're exactly right, Don. Donnie Shell should have been with Francis. He saw a run in Grogan's eyes, stepped up. Grogan right over Donnie Shell. Complete first down inside the 20 of the Steelers. I like to call that man the all-world tight end. Nobody was ever better physically constructed for the position than Russ Francis. Now, wait a minute. Cutting out. <laughs> out to the outside. And the big man motors down inside the 15, close to the 12-yard line. That's Ron Earhart, the head coach of the New England Patriots, living perhaps to some extent in the shadows of Chuck Fairbanks, the man whose exit was inglorious. The very last game of last season when they're about to play Miami, already in the playoffs, but that's history now. Point is, Ron's got a big task ahead. And Don, you could have been built better than Francis. You just didn't do the weight lift. <laughs> Alan Clark got the Patriots off. To a good start. Out over to their 45-yard line. They have moved now to the 12-yard line of the Steelers. Cunningham. Hangs by the 5-yard line. Busted a tackle behind John Hanna. Uh, Broke a tackle. Ham saved it at the 5. I First down to England. I thought he fell. Then I said, May, it's just a great fake. <laughs> There's Chuck Knoll. The great coach of the Steelers. Here it is in replay, Don. Well, they did go right on that left side again. They just got a habit over there. That's a pretty good hole. I think Cunningham did slip a little bit, but there's some good leg strength. She had good leg strength. It was Hannah, as Frank pointed out, who was the lead blocker there. And they have been running effectively left behind Hannah and young Dwight Will. 
New England threatening. Remember, the Steelers did not give up a touchdown the entire first quarter of any game last season. Play action. Brogan looking for a receiver. They're held up. Francis is there, but he has to overthrow it. Donnie Shell backs into it. So many times you see Jack Ham in an area where he's going to mess up a play, and he was the one then that read it extremely well, got out in front of Grogan, never let him really turn that corner to put any pressure there. I think he just threw it away. Well, you know about Ham, all of you. You don't want to be redundant. Through the years, you've got the same plays, the same players, but this one is so exceptional. Jack Ham out of Penn State, one of the many brilliant linebackers from that school. And only yesterday, Bill Berge of the Eagles tied him, tied him in all-time career high in interceptions by a linebacker at 56. So that's Jack Kent. Second and goal. Andy Johnson gets inside the five to the four. They're tough yardage down here against the Steelers. Gary Dunn, who will see a lot of action tonight on the front four for the Steelers, was in there. He's number 67. 56. 56. I don't like it. 56. Yeah. Well, it's true. I tell you that, Berge intercepted one yesterday in the first two minutes of the game. That was unbelievable. I saw that. That was nuts. Got control of the football. Giants are on the two-yard line or thereabouts. And he was on the ground, and he still controlled the football. Third and goal, and Horace Ivory is in for New England. Play action. Grogan gets the pressure. Man wide open. Fred oh, yeah. One hands it, oh, as yeah. we have seen him do so many times, and the Steelers have given up that long string of scoreless first quarters. New England on the scoreboard. They used up over five minutes on the drive. Oh, that was really pretty, and a really pretty drive, too. Well, the last person, as we look at it again from the end zone, to leave Darrell Stingley in the administration building up here before the game was Russ Francis. And he said, I'm going to get three tonight for Darrell. They are a motion charge. Hey, somebody, I don't know, I couldn't see who it was. Boy, they popped old Grogan right there. Just Safety went, blitz. Who was that? Right? Edwards. Man, he came in there and got him a good composure. John Smith for the conversion. Yes. 9.39 remaining in the first quarter. And let's take a look again. He's coming off that line, a little stand-up block. They're trying to hold him in there, then moving back across that side, across the flow. And then he is wide open. You'd have to think somebody missed an assignment. Give me that one hand on it, and it's mine. <laughs> we'll be back. Football kicks off the new season. Bear Bryant's Alabama Crimson Tide battle Georgia Tech Saturday on ABC. Russ Francis, he still hasn't given up motorcycles, Don, an hour ago. Back. <laughs> Remember last January, we talked to him, he said, nah, I had to get right back on there, just like the horse that throws the kid. Well, he should give up airplanes. He's got his own charter service in Hawaii. <laughs> John Smith, the kickoff for New England. They lead 7-0. Larry Anderson is deep. Smith what? hits it high, and he hits it short. And that was Tony Anderson, a rookie out of Tipo that Pounds it back out over the 30-yard line to the 32. Okay. Terry Bradshaw will open a quarterback. He had a marvelous year last year. And Franco Harris, well, he's not all that far away from Canton, Ohio, I would say. <laughs> There's your offensive line. The wide receivers, they're thin there. Lynn Swan is playing. He might not even be playing if they were not so many injuries to the outside receivers of the Pittsburgh Steelers. John Stallworth is there. Discussion on the field. We did not see a flag, but there is a discussion. Our referee tonight, Jim Tunney. We've also got, uh, they got a new man kind of in that line, too. We've got some injuries there. Ted Peterson is stepping in with Larry Brown. Ray Penny is out for the year. What was that? Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 30. First well. down. Huh. All right, Larry Anderson, who was scheduled to run that kickoff back. It was short by John Smith. Tony Anderson, indeed, was the receiver. First to foul, August Larry Anderson. First and ten. Steelers have the ball. They're on 17-yard line. Sidney Thornton is starting. There he is, number 38, in place of Rocky Blyer, as a sore knee. And the big man, the biggest of the Steeler backs, breaks a lot of tackles, and he gets out over the 25-yard line. Stopped there by Steve Nelson. There's that 3-4. That's the front three. Ray Hamilton, of course, in the middle. Sam Hunt, number 50. He looks like two tackles. He weighs about 260. 
And a lot of speed in that secondary. And a lot of number one draft picks we'll tell you about a little later on. Thornton gets eight yards. Just short of the 25. As you look at Steve Grogan, who led the Pats to a touchdown. With a pass to Russ Francis, their first possession. Second down, a long two. The ball just short of the 25. Franco Harris gets his first Ooh. ball. He's nailed. Ooh, he's hit hard there. It was Steve Nelson, one of those inside linebackers, and a strong duty is number 57 that made the stop right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a half a yard. It'll be third and a yard and a half. What's interesting about that is New England continues to play the 34 defense. Bucko Kilroy, the general manager, told me it may be growing obsolete. He said we can't generate a pass rush with it. But they sure can defense the run with it. You just saw an example where the great coterie of linebackers comes into prominence with the Patriots. Third, a long one and a half. Harris gets the call. Oh, he boy. gets the first down. Tim Fox was there to make the stop, but not before Franco Harris coming off another 1,000-yard year last year. Tell you what, he's only a little over 1,200 yards from becoming the third leading rusher in the history of this game behind only Jim Brown and O.J. Simpson. Look what he did last year against New England. He hasn't done badly on Monday nights that we've had him around either. No. Interesting graphic. One that I find really interesting. He carried the ball so many times last year and only fumbled it four times. First and ten. Bradshaw. All right. To look out to Fires intended for Randy Grossman. And Grossman had Hunt all over him. The big man, as big as he is, was back there defending along with Steve Nelson. Frank, in case some of the viewers are wondering why the great big Benny Cunningham cut in the mold of Casper and Francis isn't in there yet. He's coming off knee surgery, as you know, and as big as he is, as strong as he is, as fast as he is for his size, he's shown vulnerability, Dandy, to injury. So they want to go carefully with him, because in the long run, he's where that tight end is at. No derogation of the sure-handed Grossman. Second down, 10. Lynn Swan, flank to the right. To the left is John Stallworth. Play action by Bradshaw. All the screen to Sidney Thornton. It is a good one. Oh, that was pretty. That was Sydney really starting out to the 43-yard line. Really set up well. First down, Steelers. Doug Bedoin made the tackle on Thornton. He's in there, by the way, again, because Rocky Blyer has a sore knee. He's missed all the preseason. Thornton has played most of it. Here it is again, Doug. Well, there's a, you know, you saw Franco go the other way, a little cross action in there, trying to confuse the linebackers, but it was just set up so well. They made it look like a run in the beginning. Then a regular pass, Terry dropped back and hit him slipping out to the side there. Nice screen. Superb block by the center, number 52, Mike Webster. First and 10, the ball just over the 43-yard line of the Steelers. Franco Harris, <laughs> pecking along the line. He does that so well. He, he really does. He along until he finds something, and he, all of a sudden, it doesn't look like he has much, but he gets five yards. How many backs do you think of, honestly, would not have made a first down when he gained a yard here a while ago? He has that way of somehow getting that yard when he needs it which obviously is sometimes more important than uh, than those other gainers. You well, his first change of speed done, his quickness of acceleration for a man so big is simply astonishing. I think we all agree he's a good football player. If he's not, you've got a scoop. That's it. <laughs> Second and five, the ball at the 49-yard line. The Steelers now maintaining their own possession of the football. Thornton gets the call, gets a good block. Oh, boy. Thornton is rough. Good defensive play by Claiborne coming up from the left corner. I think that's old Hawkins out there, too. But that's one of the things to watch with this Patriots team, Don, as you know, probably as well as anybody in the business. What's that? That secondary of the Patriots. So many number one draft choices. Such quickness. The ability not to be worried about committing too early because of the ability to recapture. And so they can come up and stop the run as they did there. Thornton got two. Third down three. The ball at the 49-yard line of New England. The toss goes to Harris. He gets a block from Thornton. Not good enough. Down he goes, and he's in the arms of number 52, Steve uh, King, and the Steelers will have to turn it over. Uh, a real good football player just ran into some more real good football players over there that time. Oh, that's nice. I like to see it. It's fun. Oh, King, this stuff. And this is, you're not coming around me, fella. Craig Colquitt is out now for the Steelers, and dropping deep will be Stanley Morgan. He's a blazer. <laughs> there he is. Man can motor. Craig Colquitt. 
Good kicker. Kicks it high. Finds the handle. Looking for the sideline. Morgan. Boy, he just barely missed it, too. Simulated the fair catch, and he just did miss putting it out inside the five. But it's a touchback, and New England with a 7 to nothing lead. Here in the first quarter, 5-10 remaining. We'll have possession at the 20. And then Henry Winkler hosts the 31st Annual Emmy Awards. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith, and we've got a pretty good football game going here. The two division champions from their respective divisions in the American Football Conference. The New England Patriots, they got on the scoreboard in their very first possession. It was Steve Grogan to Russ Francis. The Steelers moved the ball well, then they came up short on the third down, and now the Patriots have their second possession, the ball at the 20-yard line following the touchback. Grogan, play action to the right on first down. I'm telling you, and out he goes for another first down to the 33, and, well, he's getting a little smarter. I don't think he would have done that a year ago. Maybe not, Frank, but that was a key play for Ron Earhart, the head coach, and Bucko Kilroy, the general manager, to watch. They wanted to see if he could still do it after the surgery. I think more important than that, you got a good shot there of Wheeler, the guy that they're really questioning, the new left tackle. They did a little stunt trick, whatever you want to call it. He picked it up, and those are one of the most difficult things for the young lineman to pick up. They did a little cross block over there, and he got his man. We're talking about Dwight Wheeler, number 62, who is replacing Leon Gray, who is now in Houston. On the first and 10, the handoff goes to Cunningham. And he did it again. Pulls his way out over the 35 to the 36-yard line, 37-yard line. Again, a long three. It'll be second down and seven. I had an interesting comment, Frank. You walked out before the game started, before we came on the air. I was talking to David Israel, the brilliant young columnist of the Chicago Tribune, and he said, I hope you guys aren't talk going to talk about Leon Gray. I can't remember a block he threw, which is vivid testimony of the fact that David has not been watching the Patriots. <laughs> now, where did you come up with that? <laughs> take, take care of old David. Here we come. Brogan, he fired. Stanley Morgan, number 86, by knocked up in the air. Jack Lambert. And Jack Lambert, a middle linebacker, as he always is, around the football, he gets the interception on the deflection. All right, let's see if we can see what happens. Another little kind of a play action, half roll out of here, option run and throw. Ham is back there pretty deep. Never really put any pressure. Gosh, that was just a good defensive play. For Pittsburgh. 341 remaining in the first quarter. The first turnover of the ball game. Jack Lambert, this man who is always around the football. I've characterized him as a method type football player. If you ever heard of a method actor, he really gets involved. Mike Wagner caused the interception when he hit the re intended receiver, Stanley Morgan, jarring the ball loose. Steelers, first and ten. Handoff, Sidney Thornton, left side, inside. The 49-yard line for a gain of about a yard. Good defensive play there. Sydney Thunder Thornton in there because Rocky Blyer is not. Also, number one draft choice of the Steelers, Greg Hawthorne, who proved himself in the preseason to be a surprisingly good lead blocker and with surprising speed as an outside runner. There's Thornton. Not in there because of a pulled hamstring. As Frank said at the very beginning of the telecast, the still is hobbled by nagging minor injuries. Frank knows things, doesn't he? New England in a 4-3. They're anticipating pass. They have number 78, Tony McGee. He's their best pass rusher. Bottom of the screen. Bradshaw right there, gets right it there. And open. Oh. It was Grossman, but the big man, the big round cat, was back there. No, this time getting back there was Mike Hawkins. Well, he's big, too. Yeah, they're all pretty good size, aren't they? You know, that's one of those things where those... Sometimes referee back there will throw a flag, say you're face guarding, because he was really pretty well beaten. On the face guard, Don, as you know, you've got to wave the arms. There's a frequent confusion over the interpretation of that rule. That's if true. the hand is merely outstretched, no face guarding. You must wave the hand and the arm. Now, that's, that's good to know. Third and nine, Swan goes out <laughs> to the right. Out to the left is Stalwart. <laughs> Whoops. Flag is down. You saw the Patriot offside. Oh, yes. Bradshaw underthrows Stallworth, but he'll have another opportunity. The Patriot out of their 4-3 defensive left tackle. There is the indication from referee Jim Tunney. Tunney, the single most handsome referee in the league. Hollywoodish type, lives out there. Yes. 64, 
Still third down. Richard tackle along with Ray Hamilton in the 4-3 alignment when the Patriots want to get more of a pass rush. So it'll be third down now in five. 250 remaining in the first quarter. Now, Stallworth, 82, Swan, 88, top of your screen, two wide receivers to Bradshaw's right. Randy Grossman, a clutch receiver, lined up a tight end. Look, Stallworth there. has the first down. Good play. Blitz coming in on Bradshaw, and he got it off. Stallworth and Swan can one two you to death. Remember the Super Bowl? This time you'll be looking at Stallworth again. Dandy Don will delineate. I certainly will. The one, you know, when you, as we've said it so many times, but there's a way, whenever you're going to send those linebackers, they're trying to get improved pass rush, as you mentioned. These guys can do it because they've got so much speed back there, but they're covering guys that can also burn. So Terry made a good adjustment, just flipped it out there on the first down. At the 31-yard line of New England. New England leading 7-0. Bradshaw, he can write a letter. Yep. Incomplete. That was in and out. That was old Swanee, wasn't it? Lynn Swan is playing with a very sore toe, and as a matter of fact, he has been in camp just a little over two weeks, involved in what he considered a very serious court case out in San Francisco. It was late coming back. Quite a controversy developed over that. The yeah. man is just a remarkable athlete in all respects. Nobody knows it better than Frank. He's had Swanee down at the Superstars a number of times. There you saw the miss. Very rare for that remarkable young man. Second down, 10. Nobody better at coming back for the football. We'll get into that later, Don. Or coming across the middle, making those sliding catches. Or going deep with it. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you like. He's also a good football player. Bradshaw changing off. And he didn't, and change, he quickly didn't change quickly enough. It'll be a fiver against the Steelers. Point I was making, Don, while we have a second. There's Jim Tunney measuring it off. Swanee only averaged 14.1 yards per reception last year. Yeah. Which was less than the average for the average wide receiver. And it's because he comes back, shields the defender with his body, makes the great leap, you know, his leaping ability. Yeah. In other words, completes passes on passing technique that with other receivers wouldn't be completed. I want to think about that. And I'm going to come back later. Okay. All right. Second down, 15. Ball inside the 36-yard line following the delay of game. Bradshaw again with a lot of time in there. Oh, my God. There it is. Oh, God. <laughs> there is the the one. first down at the 17th. Not coming back, going up. <laughs> oh, my You've God. You've got to be fearless to do that. Now, wait a minute. Does it. Wait a minute, Howard. Now, Frank had that one. Frank, you had the one coming across the middle, so you cover this one. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It took a lot of guts. You got it. Sure it does. He uh, knew Flex well, was there. Oh. He knew man. he was going to get pounded. Forget and this all the time. Maintained his concentration. Now this is the same guy that dropped the one that was in his hands the play That's right. before. Swanee does have that great leaping ability that you talked about, and that concentration, and that's really what. How in the world do people catch balls like? And he is some kind of stoic because that hurt. Hurt me. Ball at the 17. <laughs> Sidney Thornton, right side, and down goes Thornton. Good defensive play. But Doyne coming up there. And then collecting help from Mike Hawkins. Bedoin, 27, Hawkins, 59. See the way those speedsters come up from that backfield and not afraid to commit. They did, but I tell you, Mike Hawkins is really the one that did it. He's, he's that linebacker that strung it he out up there. It, and yep. that, they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know, I found it a little surprising that they let Zabel go. We talked about it earlier, but they said, you know, they have so many good linebackers in there, and they've been honest with him all along. They said, hey, we're going to go with some younger guys. He's... Uh, Chuck a room. Chuck, no. One more win, and if it came tonight, he would have won 100 football games. There's only 14 other coaches have ever done that. Second down nine. Bradshaw, play action. Looking for Stallworth. Finds Grossman in the end zone. Overthrows, but Grossman well covered back there. Picked up in a very nifty style by Doug Bedoin again. Showed you Ron Earhart there, Chuck Knoll before that. Interesting man to study, Chuck Knoll. Went through a long building process when he took over the last place Steelers. Used to be entirely different, I think, in his behavior on the sidelines. Now, aware of what's been developed, of how great his talent is, with a total security in them based upon three, count them, Super Bowl victories, 
He remains substantially implacable on the side. Third down, nine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Bradshaw. Look out, Terry. You've got him. Bradshaw. Oh, yeah. Fires over the middle to Grossman, and the man that saved that was Sam Davis, who came back and picked off McGee, I think it was, coming in defensively. It looked like Bradshaw was going to be trapped, and Sam Davis made a great block for him. Maybe you'll see it here. Watch 57. He'll come back. There it is. That's some good pressure right in through there, though. They're out of the corner. This is heck of a throw by Terry. That thing was right on the money. He's running one way, and you've got Grossman going the other. All right, and the quarter has expired. The Steelers have the football. First and goal, four-yard line of the Patriots. They trail 7 to nothing. The terrible towel, the yellow or orange towel, symbolic of the feared Pittsburgh Steelers Super Bowl champions. An invention of Myron Cope, a brilliant sports writer who turned a very popular local announcer in Pittsburgh. His invention, the fans love it. The a, local level. And a very popular Terry Bradshaw has moved the Steelers inside the five-yard line. First and goal. Grossman in motion. Franco Harris. Thornton with the block out. Oh, front. man. It was Steve Nelson, Frank. Steve came in there. Nelson. Yeah, he came in from the uh, inside. Came in a middle move. Have to have some speed to catch Franco that way. They lost about a yard on that play. Good move by Nelson. It's been frequently said as you watch Nelson coming through here, number 57, that he's one of the best there is at what he does. His Reed. problem is he beats himself up, gets injured. See that seven? You see him, what he's really doing, he's keying on that, that guard. He's trying to follow uh, Steve Kirsten up there. And he did it. He beat Kirsten out there to the block. Second and goal, the ball at the five-yard line. Inside handoff. Thornton just sheer strength as he hurdles his 230 pounds down close to the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Chuck No looking on. Trained well. Seven years he played under Paul Brown. Coached under Sid Gilman, Don Shula. Won one game his first season when he came to the Steelers. From 72, he has not been out of the playoffs. With a surprising sense of humor, despite the determination written across the face. Third and goal. Steelers down by seven. Oh, yeah. Ooh, bang. And Sidney Thornton found a big hole over Sam Davis and Mike Webster. And he's into the end zone. And the Steelers are within one of tying it up. All right, let's see. What are they doing up there? Man, that's just kind of straight away. They're counting on Nelson to fill that middle. And he had a good move on him in the inside. There. That was Mike Webster that they followed. Just shot out there and got it. Opened oh, up, didn't I'll he? I'll tell you, you have to fill those gaps on a goal line defense. You can't take them head on. That looked like what they called a little outside 4-3. <laughs> Both went to the outsides. You get it, middle linebacker. An ineffectual one. That's right. Matt Barr. No good. Welcome to the NFL, Matt. <laughs> and I started to say that Matt Barr has just scored his first NFL point. Matt Barr has just not scored his first NFL point. Steelers down by one. Can you imagine trying to... On ABC, a special Thursday night edition. The Los Angeles Rams battle the Denver Broncos Thursday on ABC. And we'll be looking forward to our visit to the Mile High City Thursday night. And that should be quite a matchup there. The Rams trying to get back after they lost their first game to Oakland. That's an 8.30 Eastern start, by the way. Matt Barr to kick off. Oh, Matt. Alan Clark, the rookie from Northern Arizona. That's not the way you run back kickoffs, however. Out over the 25 to the 26. Warren Taves. On the stop for the Steelers. But that's not the way you kick off either. Roy Girella may be enjoying this. Well, the complaint about Matt, it really has been that he hasn't gotten the distance on those kickoffs, but they say he's really been terrific with his field goal. So I assume they thought that his leg would get stronger or whatever. That's Roy Girella uh, was only 12 of 26 last year. And that really was the reason they went fishing. They took Matt Barr on the sixth round draft pick. He's the brother, by the way, of Chris Barr of Cincinnati. Broke a lot of Chris's records at Penn State. First and ten, New England. Harold Jackson is in motion. Andy Johnson gets the call. Sees a little daylight. 
Turns back to the inside, gets out over the 30-yard line for a gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six. They're the two kickers of the Steelers, Craig Colquitt. Young Barr having an embarrassing moment at the present time. His father, by the way, Matt Barr's father, was on the U.S. World Cup soccer team that beat England a few years back. Has another brother, All-American soccer player in the Navy, quite an athletic family. Second and six, Jackson again, the motion man. Flag is down as Sam Cunningham has the first down, but again, a flag is down. And they call old Harold Jackson for starting toward that line in Louis. Let's see. Well, it could have been. You got it. That will nullify a first down. That was just a little bit of a careless attitude going out there. He was not involved in the play. Terry with the phones. Hello, Terry. Can you hear me? Ter Terry, this is Don. Ooh, what a Super Bowl he had. Not Incredible too Super shabby. Bowl. Four touchdowns, 17 of 30. MVP over 300 yards. And he's never had a regular season 300-yard game. He's one of your good old boys. I read an interesting article on him and saying that Terry says he has to learn or he develop, he changes his throwing style all the different all the time. That just fascinates me. How the heck you do that? Second and eleven. Draw play. Cunningham fools no one. He gets a couple of yards. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. It might be likened, Don, to a batter who adjusts his batting stance according to the pitches. They line right up as they did earlier in the first quarter. We told you about that. Grogan calling his own plays, trying to catch the Steelers, maybe a little lax setting their defense. Grogan fires and it's incomplete. Intended there for Andy Johnson out of the backfield, and New England will have to punt their first punt. Getting back to what you brought up, how do they do that? It's like Rod Carew, who's got four different basic batting stances, and Rusty Staub will adjust to the other. There are certain people who can do that. I was, uh, yeah. I, I think Terry might have been pulling some rider's leg. Well, you know, I, I really wonder. I want to ask him about it because what he said was, he said, I'm not like Greasy and Bert Jones, the two guys. He says, they just go out and throw the same way all the time. I think he meant it. Lynn Swan is deep. The Terry Steelers punts. are going to rush. They have 10 men at the line of scrimmage. Swan, we understand, has been told, well, fair catch it. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. You got a bad toe. We don't want to lose you. We don't have another wide receiver, but Lynn doesn't like the fair catch it. <laughs> I don't think he's going to catch it at all. <laughs> oh, and it takes a good New England bounce. Oh, the wow. rookie fourth round draft pick, Eddie Hare, was the putter for New England. And he gets off a of beauty. Swan couldn't handle it. And Pittsburgh will start at their own 16 yard line when we return. Russ Francis, apparently with an ice bag on his right hand. We'll try and get a report on that. His hands were warm. Yeah. Well, it's not all that warm tonight. Oh. The Soccer Bowl. Vancouver, of course, with that stunning upset victory over the Cosmos. Tampa Bay has been in the Soccer Bowl three times since 1975. The Steelers have won the Super Bowl three times. They have a first and ten. The ball up to 16. They're down by one point. Franco Harris gets the call. Oh, boy. Oh, this time man. he tried to tippy-toe back inside, and he got nailed. That's that Nelson again. You got oh. old Nelson right out there in the middle of that outfit. Plus, you got Sugar Ray Bear. Hamilton. Go get it, Sugar Bear. You were talking about how tough it is against the run, and, and what it really does is allows those guys the flexibility to a little bit more room off that line where they can pursue so well. And uh, that's why they like it, I think, against the run. New England. They almost have a specialized defensive, well, defensive units. They shuffle linebackers in front four. Ray Costick is in there now, number 55, a one linebacker. Second down, a little more than 10. Franco Harris gets the call again. Gets to the 19-yard line, a gain of a couple. Give him three. It'll be third down and seven. I like to put Costick in there because he's A, good on pass coverage, and B, on special teams. He was originally recommended to be drafted by the Patriots when Ray Perkins, the present head coach of the Giants, was an assistant here. And then, when Costick played out his option, the Giants tried to get him. They actually had him sign an offer, but the Patriots met the offer, so he stayed with New England. They've been told Francis, the tight end for New England, has a sore hand. He will come back. Third down, seven. Bradshaw putting both backs out, and he gets in trouble but gets out of it, oh. and he finds oh, Cunningham. Man. What an arm. 
Benny Cunningham, and oh, we were telling you how he's throwing the ball at the end of last year. Don, I don't know anyone that can throw it as strong as he can. With he can throw off balance either foot. It just doesn't matter. That's that's really what he did. Look again. I think that's what he did this time. He's getting a lot of pressure, and he just turns up and zip. That ball is right there between the eight and nine. It was over Bedoin and in front of Mike Haynes. That got him out of a hold, and indeed the first down at the 44-yard line. Rod Shope, defensively now for New England at linebacker number 56 as they continue to juggle personnel. Bradshaw again tries to go deep to Stallworth, who's in a foot race back there with Haynes, and Bradshaw had to let it go because he was under tremendous pressure, and he took quite a shot. Well, if there had been interference on this, it would have been on Stallworth. Yeah, it, it, it would have been. The thing, the thing, let's take another quick look in here. He said, wait a minute, hold it. I'm going to hold him up because I know they got a new rule in here, and I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to hurt you, Terry. Rod Schott, the linebacker for New England, all over Bradshaw. Steelers now with 10-34 remaining in the first half and trailing 7-6, to six, have a second down and 10 at their 44-yard line. Stallworth goes out left. Picks up Mike Haynes out there to the right. Then Swan. Ray Claiborne defensively over Swan. Bradshaw this time finds oh the time gosh. and Cunningham could not hold on. He was covered by Bedoin. Bedoin took a shot. Cunningham, had he held on, would have had a big gainer. Yes, Bedoin took a chance there. We, we've been saying Bedoin's name a lot, and that always kind of indicates that they may be kind of trying to isolate him a little bit back there because uh, he's been trying to cover the tight ends. Sometimes the receivers might be interested to see what they try to do. Those other guys got a little bit more speed than Bedoin. What's interesting, up till now, the Steelers have gained only 21 yards rushing, 82 passing. So they haven't gotten that ground game working against this 34 defense. Third and 10. Bradshaw. And down goes Bradshaw. Tony McGee, they call him the designated pass rusher, was all over Terry Bradshaw. Also hustling in there, Mel Lunsford. They were in a 4-3. Big Mel is the guy. Go into. He was there first. Well, no, actually, McGee's there, but then Lunsford comes back. He's the guy that sometimes they take out in that situation. They say that this preseason in particular, that Lunsford has really come on as a pass rush. In any event, fourth down, Craig Colquitt will kick. Stanley Morgan is standing at his own 20-yard line for New England. Necessarily a good kick by Colquitt. As a matter of fact, he goes out of bounds at the 33 yard line. So, New England, not bad field position following a 29 yard punt by Craig Colquitt. We'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to make a very special player introduction. Please give a warm New England welcome to a very important member of the New England Patriots who is seated in the press box tonight. Number 84, wide receiver, Darrell Stingley. Darrell Stingley, whom you will hear from at halftime in an interview with Howard Cosell, making his first return visit. There's an absolute capacity crowd here, a standing ovation for number 84, who was injured, of course, tragically, last October, August the 12th. He has returned home. He is going to be executive director of playing personnel. Has a very optimistic outlook on his future. Has regained movement in his right hand after being fully paralyzed for so long. And as I said, you will hear from him at halftime. This is a moment to remember as one fans the stands, looks at these people, one realizes what an athlete can come to mean to a population. And this has been a remarkable athlete, number 84, Daryl Stinger. And it happened on August 12th, a year ago, the collision with Jack Tatum. Not only were the fans applauding his teammates on the sidelines, 
facing up to the press box, applauding number 84. I suppose it's impossible to really try to imagine what's going through his mind. It's, it's something that's so far beyond most of us. Well, when you meet him at halftime, we'll see the kind of young man he is. Uh, another special kind of courage. Owner Billy Sullivan announcing today that he would be the executive director of playing personnel for New England. He wants to scout college personnel. Plans in the coming future, whether it be one year, two years, five years, to be able to move around the country, look at film, see young college players. Those faces are lit up. And from the way Daryl was greeted, when they wheeled him in tonight, as the tears rolled down his face, you know what they meant to. And those players, they poured in to see. Let the moment speak. I suppose it would continue for many, many more minutes. Darrell, I'm sure, would not want that to be. The ovation continues as play. Well, it cannot be resumed as Steve Grogan obviously cannot call the snap numbers. And Grogan leads his teammates away from the line of scrimmage, applauding Daryl Stingley. scored first. Pittsburgh answered back, but they missed the conversion, so the Steelers are down by one. Russ Francis, we saw him a while ago with a big ice bag on his right hand, is in the lineup. Can't hardly miss him. He's 6'6", six, six, a 240-pounder, wears number 81. Second and eight, the ball at the 35-yard line of New England. Rogan. Good pass protection, oh, yes. and oh, did he throw a beautiful oh, shot to did. Stanley Morgan. He laid that one right there. L.C. Greenwood charging in on Grogan, and Don, you won't see a finer pass throw. No, sir. It was right in the middle there. He got him going. Had pretty good coverage back there, too, uh, Frank. That thing was... He was not that wide open. Had Jack Ham drop him back into that deep zone, and he hit him right in the middle. Let's take another quick look. Pressure applied by L.C. Greenwood. Furness was in there, and look at this. That is right on the money. 
right over Jack Ham. That was Ron Johnson, number 29, that was back there covering it. And the first down is all the way down inside the Steelers' 33-yard line. Horace Ivory, 23, now in a setback, replacing Andy Johnson. Ivory, the leading rusher in preseason. But the ball goes to Cunningham. Down he goes in the arms of Robin Cole. After a gain of three, it'll be second down and seven. Mike Wagner up there to help Robin Cole, who alternates with Lauren Taves of the Steelers. Taves perhaps a little better against the pass, while Cole is just dynamite against the run. That catch seconds ago, Dandy, by Morgan, I can't help thinking of when Stan walked out of Stingley's room tonight, past you and Frank, just before you came in, and Stanley said, I'm going to get at least one tonight. Well, I'll do it for Darryl. Emotions often overplayed, but not in this case. Rogan, second down, seven. Got hit. Ball deflected and intended for Russ Francis. And we have just received a report that Terry Bradshaw has damaged his toe. We don't know how severely. And we're looking along the bench trying to find him. Yep. There he is. Well, he's got a lot of toes, I guess. He's still ch checking it out. He's tough. It's those little now. You no, know, it hurts. That yeah, does hurt. You know, it is funny. You got a lot of toes, but it only takes one of them to really hurt. That's what Lynn was telling me. How did you afternoon. find that out? I just, I heard, just figured that out. <laughs> Lynn, of course, suffering from <laughs> sore big toe on his left foot. I read somewhere they got a thing called disco toe and disco thumb now. I see Bill Epidemic. Maybe that's one of them. And Jogger's feet. Yeah. Third down, seven. Look out, boy. Oh, oh man. Jack Lambert. He took it away. In a pass rush. And Mike Ed, Mike Wagner was all over Russ Francis, but he just took it out of the arms of Mike Wagner. He really did. Two great plays. One by Grogan, and then one by Russ Francis. After all, he's all world. That's what you said. Look at that. Little quick dip to the inside. <laughs> he, he just did. <laughs> Wagner was, he was looking toward that goal line, wasn't he, on the other he side? He sure was, and a minute and more, and he'd have got seconds more, he'd have gotten away. He was trying to get the ball to Francis to play before, and that was when it was tipped. Francis was open then, too. Francis, who scored the first touchdown, their only touchdown, gives them a first down, the 15-yard line. Horse Ivory. Down goes Ivory, Mel Blood coming up from the cornerback. Getting a little help there from number 56, Rob and Cole. It's like reading somebody's mail over there, isn't it? We're slipping in there close. We're bringing it right to your living room. It says, be alert. Bradshaw is currently leaving the field, and that would, well, it could be very damaging to the Steelers. Mike Krusek is the backup quarterback. Played his college football at Boston College here nearby Boston. But he has not played that much football with the Steelers. Second down and nine. Grogan. Oh. oh, and he had Francis, and Francis knows he should have had it. That one was really zip. You know, you say, well, I, can you catch it as hard as I can throw it? And they always could me, but uh, Grogan throws it a little bit hard. He got a little help from Robin Cole coming out that side. That's when they like Taves in there in yeah. the pass defense. That Cole was, really got turned around. Yeah, that was really catchable. That was slipped right through. Yeah, That's all world, too, wasn't it? No, he's no longer. Yeah, well, he's close. He's, he's so close to all world, well, you'd hardly know his name. Yeah. No room for human error. <laughs> Third down, nine. Ball at the 14-yard line. Harold Jackson flanked out to the right. Stanley Morgan to the left. Dangerous one, of course, number 81, Russ Francis. Full blitz, safety blitz, Wagner all over Grogan. Tries to get it off to Francis incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Mike Wagner on the safety blitz, forcing Grogan out of the pocket. Uh, Grogan doesn't look like that he's just real healthy either. Mike Prusik on the sideline. You're right, he hasn't played much. Played two quarters in this preseason. Bradshaw playing most of the preseason. He was 6 of 12. Second round draft pick back in 76. Great career at Boston College. There's a lot better than people think. Here's Johnny Smith who won his job back from Posey. 
Johnny Smith from Southampton, England. Yes, I remember him well. Struggled through last year, the first three games with a torn thigh muscle. Finally had to go on the injured reserve after three games. 31 yard attempt for John Smith. Englishman. I'd say so, right through the uprights. And New England has extended their lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Steelers have to be troubled. Bradshaw has gone to the locker room. 10-6, Patriots over the Steelers. Olympic gold, two-time world champion Linda Floriani. The 1980 Winter Olympics exclusively on ABC. 6.39 remaining in the first half. Here at Foxborough, the New England Patriots with a 31-yard field goal by John Smith. Now leading the Steelers, 10 to 6. Smith to kick off. You're looking at Larry Anderson. Fourth round draft pick out of Louisiana Tech. A whole bunch of speed back there with Anderson. And he'll take it at the three. And he's got him a hole. Flag is down. And Anderson is down at the 29-yard line. And it, in all probability, will might affect that new rule where on all kicking special teams, you cannot block above the waist. Nope, we have a clipping call, but that new rule is going to have quite an impact on the kicking game. Second round draft pick in 76, as we told you. He's played two quarters in preseason. Played quite a bit back in that rookie year of 76, and Bradshaw had problems. Started six times. Won all six of those games, but it was mostly the defense that won. Had a remarkable record at Boston College, where he set an NCAA career Accuracy record, 67.8 percent. Well, that's not bad. That ain't bad at all. That's a lot better than people think. He may just need this kind of opportunity. He starts with his team down, 10 to 6. The ball at the 10-yard line, following that clipping call. Franco Harris gets the call. Kruzik getting the feel of the game. Harris out to the 12-yard line, collected there by Julius Adams. Brogan getting a little attention on the sidelines. I believe it's Russ Francis sitting next to him. I like to see them throw deep in the early downs in this kind of situation. Often see them connect, break it open. Oh. Second down, something for something else. Sidney Thornton. Nifty running for Thornton. He had nothing and turned it into about a three yard gain. It'll be third down and Call it four. Steve Nelson in on the stop along with Sam Hunt. Kid didn't listen. They don't make them like they used to. Nope. But then they never did. They mark it at the 17. Thornton, of course, in there, as I have told you earlier, because Rocky Blyer has missed all of the preseason with a sprained knee. Harris tonight. 13 yards rushing. Thornton, 15 yards rushing. 5-17 remaining in the half. Third and three, Harris. He knew where the first down was. I believe he has it. It's. <laughs> I thought Kruzik, got he handled himself as well as any, what they call backup quarterback. I've heard he had a couple of comments that he says, I'm really a little impatient because I really have worked hard, prepared. He gives it a full year-round effort. He says, I think that's really my job. Uh, that's what they're paying me my money for. He doesn't really work in the offseason other than preparing himself uh, for that season. So he's getting a little impatient. He says, I don't want to wish anybody any bad luck like injuries. He says, but I want to play some football. Harris gets the first down. The tight ends, by the way, are shuffling the plays into Kruzik, Vinnie Cunningham, and Randy Grossman. Kruzik, play action. Uh-oh. Ooh, attempted there to John Stallworth. Stallworth well covered by Mike Haynes. Yes, sir. Preliminary diagnosis on Terry Bradshaw. Sprained toe. Doesn't sound like much, but for a quarterback who has to move quickly away from the center, plant his feet to pass, and you saw Bradshaw on the sidelines, obviously in pain. Big Russ on the phone. Oh, yeah, he wants to talk to you, Howard. I'm not going to help him anymore. <laughs> Second and ten. The ball at the 20-yard line. Franco Harris. And good defensive play. 
Number 72, Mal Lunsford, moving in defensively from left end. Always good, as Don noted earlier, against the run, and now suddenly, surprisingly good on the pass rush. Tough cookie, that Mel Lunsford. Talent-laden football team, New England. He helps them out when they want to slide into that 4-3, which they do frequently. have been using it frequently this evening. Much more than we've seen in the past. They're in it right now. Third down nine. Krizik. Flag is down, and Krizik gets the pass off, but it's incomplete. Tended for Len Swan. Flag is down, deep downfield. You can tell Swanee by the slide. <laughs> Holding and it's going to go against New England and here is Terry Bradshaw with a full limp. Well, with this guy, you never can tell. I saw him carry him off one time when he came back. I mean, carry. I thought I said, man, that might be the end of his career. Holding, defense, first down. That was the call. Frank just made an excellent point. We noted at the advent of the game that. New England plays a basically 34 defense. Yeah. That Bucko Kilroy is growing increasingly disenchanted with it for the absence of a pass rush. And during the course of the game, more and more frequently, they have gone to a 4 3. First and 10. Grizzly tries to get the screen off. <laughs> was in there all over Kruzik. I, th I think you'll see that you'll see four guys down in one line, but somebody just misses a block there. And they just came through kind of scot-free. That's a linebacker. Oftentimes, an offensive tackle will look for a certain number over there. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see it. He says, well, that's not my guy. He's not going to come. But he did that time, didn't he? I'll tell you, with guys like Mike Hawkins, who was uh, played a lot of down line, they can give you a funny-looking look. He can make, can make it look like a 4-3. They can pop out of it into a 3-4, or they can come with the four men. That was always the Shula theory with his old 53 defense. Uh -huh. Second and 10. Franco Harris. Nobody home there. Turns to the outside, and there's a whole lot of folks home there. Third and 10. They really are giving them some different looks up there, and I think it's causing them some problems, which is kind of a, unusual because it's such a veteran offensive line. These guys really pulled it together the last couple of years on that offensive line. Well, as you mentioned, Don, too, in the, at the right tackle spot, they're missing Larry Brown. And, of course, Ray Penny had to go on the injured reserve following complications after an appendectomy. Ted Peterson's in there now at right tackle. Harris held to 18 yards with 251 remaining here in the first half. Third and nine. Kruzik again under pressure tries to go to Thornton and Thornton cannot hold on and down goes Kruzik again and well, he's getting a lot of action early. It's a good initiation. Yeah, but what, you know, you ask yourself sometimes you change quarterbacks and that other quarterback comes in and man, he's really hot. Other times he comes in and it seems like just what we've seen today. Nobody's blocking. I mean, they're really they're missing some assignments. You say, why does that happen? Now then, I don't know. <laughs> Why'd you bring it up? I don't know. I thought maybe one of you guys would know. I don't know. Well, that's what they used to do to you. It might be that he's not Terry Bradshaw. I don't know what happened. Great call quit. Whoa. Handles a bad snap. Gets off a low kick. And Stanley Morgan lays back and then moves away from the ball as... The Steelers, with a bad kick, still will have New England back at the 36-yard line. Don't forget, we'll be with you Thursday night from Mile High City. You saw a moment ago, deep for the Steelers, and John Smith, the kickoff for New England. And Smith drills it down near the goal line, and Larry Anderson tippy-toes up, looks around, finds a little gap, and a big one. That is the third time that they return a kick, Frank. Each time the same re kick return design. So they must have spotted something on that left side over there. Well, Larry Anderson in his second year out of Louisiana Tech. The same college that produced Terry Bradshaw, who's back in the lineup. Gets it out to the 43-yard line. Good field position for the Steelers. Down by seven points. Dave Stallworth, 82. John Stallworth, brother, one wide receiver. Lynn Swan, number 88. 
the other wide receiver, Franco Harris, 32. Sidney Thornton remains He's in there as the other setback. Harris gets the call, finds a big opening. Oh, yeah. And gain of about eight, eight and a half yards before he's upended by Tim Fox. It'll be second down, call it a long yard. The ball inside New England territory, inside the 48-yard line. Typical Franco Harris, one of his great talents. The quick read at the line, the hole not where he expects it, then spotting the hole, accelerating through immediately. Good yardage. About a yard short of the first down, just underway here in the second half. Sidney Thornton bounces to the outside. He gets the first down, and he can move all that 230 pounds rather quickly. Thornton getting the start, as we told you earlier, because of Rocky Blyer's damaged knees. He, Rocky missed all of the preseason. Their number one draft pick, the rookie from Baylor. They have great plans for him. Greg Hawthorne has not been able to play tonight. He has a pulled hamstring. So it's Thornton and Franco Harris all night for the Steelers as setbacks. First and ten, Steelers inside the 42-yard line of New England. Franco Harris. Good turn. Turns the corner and steps gingerly out of bounds inside the 36-yard line. Gain of six, it'll be second down and four. Ray Claiborne, defensive cornerback for New England, part of the secondary that is Claiborne, Bedoyne, Tim Fox, and Mike Haynes for New England. Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers 35 31 winners over the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl 13 New England also won their division but they were knocked off by the Houston Oilers in the playoffs 31 to 14 and then the Steelers took care of Houston on their way to the Super Bowl on second and four this is Franco Harris oh man oh nifty running by Harris short of the first down by about a yard and yard and a half good lead block there by Thornton that time Frankie came out. They had to, I guess Tim Fox came up and tried to force it. Sam Hunt also hustling over there. We kid a lot about Sam Hunt only because of his size, but he has been motoring all over that field. Might also state that Rocky Blyer doesn't enjoy being on the sidelines, doesn't expect to stay there long, and anybody who knows this great veteran knows what he's made of. So as he watches Thornton proving that he's not just chop liver out there, but a pretty good replacement as you look at Chuck Noll, you can be assured that Blyer, a great lead blocker, will be back. Frank? Call it third and two. The ball just inside the 29-yard line of the New England Patriots. Same Thank you. Harris. <laughs> and you saw him do it a couple That's times in I the mean. first half, and he's been doing it throughout his eight-year career. Drifting along the line, finding the opening, turning upfield, and getting the first down. And Franco Harris appeared to be shaken up, but now he's on his feet. Look Pretty again. good block by Grossman. And look, there again is Thornton out on the lead block. Came out, kicked out Ray Claiborne, and Franco just cut it back up at the inside. Beautiful the way he cut back, wasn't it? And a good block by Grossman that time, too. You know, Chuck Knowles on record is saying that Sidney Thornton is one of the finest blocking backs he's ever seen come up. Well, I'll take his word for it. He's got to be one of the best if he's in the class with Blyer. First and 10, 31-yard line of New England. The Steelers down 13 to 6. We're in the third quarter. And, oh, and Franco Harris upended, hustling in there. Steve Nelson, and he's playing a whale of a game. That Nelson can kill you as long as he doesn't kill himself. That's been his problem. Right in the middle again, you'll see this is uh, that three man front we're talking about. Nelson read the play and just shot right through the middle. He looks like a good old boy, too, doesn't he? Look at him. <laughs> just country boy at heart. Well, he's good, you know, good looking. All-American type kid. Uh-huh. Loss of a yard. Stalwers split out to the left. Second down and 11. Bradshaw dumps it off to Harris. Tries to get behind the screen. He doesn't get there. Coming up quickly is Ray Claiborne at the cornerback position for New England. Got inside the screen and stopped Franco Harris at the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. I didn't even see Claiborne out there. Looked like he was got up off the ground and made that tackle. Ah, those kids, Claiborne and Haynes, are so fast. Still has just reported to us. That mean Joe Green 
sprained his knee in the warm-up before the game because he had been expected to play. Remember we told you during the first half that Joe had not been in there. But we didn't know how the injury had come about until just now. Third and ten. Bradshaw not limping at all as he drops away from center. Fires to Franco Harris. Harris <laughs> juking and making New England Patriots miss. A flag is down as Harris is down after a five-yard pickup at the 26-yard line. Might be on Stallworth over there. He tried to come back and help. It's going to be clipping. It's going to go against Pittsburgh, and it could well have been John Stallworth. Preliminary indications against the offense. Tough, tough call for Pittsburgh, but deserved. He really is quick. Franco is big, it's too. I mean, those are it? some nice, quick little steps. I love there. to watch him. Costick and Nelson getting the word. The decision, and the reason they're discussing it, well, we'll First hear the call. foul, clipping, number 82, decline. Fourth down. It was Stallworth, but the decision was whether or not to back up the Steelers and get them in further field goal range and have it third and ten or to go to fourth and five with the ball at the 26-yard line. And it, well, let's wait it out. Matt Barr, the rookie from Penn State. Well, let's see what the kid can do. Missed the conversion. He's punted poorly. 43-yard attempt. at the line of scrimmage 26 yard line when we come back number 75 mean joe green to all of the years an all pro an absolutely great defensive football player frank you know he has to be frustrated because for the last two years he sort of proved to himself and everyone else that he could play again after having that chronic back trouble for several years didn't keep him out of the pro bowl but he played he played a little less than what he wanted to do New England has a first and 10 from their own 26. Over the middle and it goes to Andy Johnson. Short of the first down out to the 34 yard line. We want to remind you college football is returning on ABC. Live 430 Eastern time Saturday. Alabama goes against Georgia Tech. Alabama of course coached by that legendary Bear Bryant. Last year's Sugar Bowl winner over Penn State. Georgia Tech coached by Pepper Rogers. They have quite a young quarterback coming up in Mike Kelly. So that's NCAA college football returning Saturday at 4.30 Eastern time. So be with us for all the excitement of college football. Second down three. Sam Cunningham gives it a go out to the 36. I believe he's short of the first down. He needed to get to the 37. There's Franco. Maybe a little tired. He's carried 18 times already. But... Even though the total for him is less than usual, 46 yards, he has had some terribly effective runs. And as Don and I were just discussing, his quickness is simply astonishing. Frank, do you have some stats on his uh, on his Monday night performance? As it seems like I read some stuff. He has been really something special on Monday nights. Sorry about that, Frank. I've got them someplace myself. That's all right. I, I, they're around here somewhere. No, they're around here. Yeah, Why did you have to ask files? that question? Well, I'm... Uh, <laughs> it's all right, that let's go. Wait a minute. Here Short we go. Short yardage. The two tight ends are in. Hasselback, Francis. Third and less than there eight. You got it. Andy Johnson finds the gap. Slithers through. Gets the first down. And more up to the 40-yard line. Andy Johnson. You must remember that this team, New England, is very deep in nearly all areas. But they also have Ivory. They also have Calhoun, the in-betweener. Not quite big enough to be your big fullback, but bigger than the average halfback and a very effective football player. First and ten, New England. Andy Johnson over the right side. Give me a yard, a yard and a half, where it'll be second down and eight. Answer your question, Donald E. Yeah, <laughs> let me ask it again. <laughs> Frank, uh, you he know, has Frank. had six 100-yard games on Monday nights and 11 appearances for a total of 1,049 yards. See there? I knew it was there. So that's something. Six. Why did you ask it at an awkward time? Well, Howard had his coffee cup on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> I knew Frank knew. Second down nine. Carl Jackson, 29. Stanley Morgan, 86. Wide receivers for the Patriots. Brogan's in trouble. Yep. A lot of trouble. Gary Dunn was there first. And then Steve Furnest. And they may be the tackles of the future for the Steelers. Furnest, of course, has arrived. But he seems to be improving. And no, about every game he plays. No possibility of a fumble there, of course. The man had been down. Ball was dead. The first Steeler sack of the night, so New England has been protecting Grogan, but you don't sack him too many times. He'll take off and run on you. Now they bring in Lauren Taves, number 51. He alternates with Robin Cole at linebacker, but he's uh, a little bit better against the pass than Cole. Russ Francis is split wide to the left. Now he's in motion. Flag is down. Should be a holding call against New England. <laughs> As Grogan moves out to the 40-yard line, 10 yards short of a first down, of course. I thought it was Ichabod Crane for a moment. No, you didn't. Really. No, oh. I did. Oh, that was Ham and Robin Cole that made that stop. You didn't think that. Look at him. He's angular, he dangling. I look, I think he's extremely athletic. Very good runner. Yeah, that's what I would say. He beat Oakland last year with his running in the very late going. Well, whatever it was, they refused it. Holding against New England, refused, fourth down. Out will come Eddie Hare, the punter for New England. Lynn Swan, great punt return man for the Steelers as a rookie back in 74. Look at that average. He hasn't done much of that lately. That's his. There's Lynn. He's been told to fair catch it. The Steelers have 10 guys at the line of scrimmage. They think Eddie Hare is slow. They try to block it each time. Fair catch called for and made, and there's a flag down back by Eddie Hare. Well, this is going to be a disputed call. They're going to call it in any event. You know, I didn't see that. I was taught, turned down there this time to watch Swanee, and I didn't see it. Well, Eddie Lambert, Jack, Jack Lambert, and Jack Ham were both in all over Hare, and he's kind of chuckling. Yeah, now watch this closely. There's Lambert, 58. Well, that's all right. They kept. Oh, that was. No, he got it. What are you talking about? He got it. Well, watch it from this angle. All right. Judge it again. I'll tell you, the reason they call that so quickly is that kicker is really vulnerable. He really is. Look at that. Now, you can really. And they like to protect him. You could break a leg so quickly. He hit him. Yeah, that's he, a good of course call. He hit, him. he hit him or did the kicker plunge into him? Well, he hit him is what he did, Howard, and they penalized him for it. And it's first well, down don't and Don't be 10. truculent uh, about it. I uh, thought he went into. <laughs> <laughs> first and 10, New England. The ball inside their 45-yard line. Sam Cunningham and Cunningham. Oh, oh, right. And he explodes out to the 50, a gain of five. It'll be second and five. Mike Wagner upends Cunningham. Sam Cunningham, he had, a, he had a tough time getting off, too. Well, he got off, I guess, pretty good in his rookie year. Second year, he broke a leg. But he's played the past couple of years and played it well. He had that big year in 77 when he gained over 1,000 yards, and he was over 750 last year. Second and five, the ball just short of midfield. Andy Johnson over the right side. He gets three, three and a half yards. It's going to be third and about two. Robin Cole in on the stop. I've been watching this Dwight Wheeler. And uh, the new uh, the rookie offensive left tackle, and he's really been doing a good job these last four or five plays. I don't really think that they're running uh, any different offense right now than they would had he had uh, Gray been in there. They were real high on him last year. He missed most of the season with a broken arm. That's number 62, Dwight Wheeler for the Patriots on the left side. Francis. Well, third and two, and does he get it? Yeah, he yes. got it. And he has enough for a first down. He had big rust. New England has always been known as a running team, Don. Tonight, they're getting good balance between their passing and their running if you look at the yardage gained in both categories. Very balanced attack. Ball inside the 45-yard line. There's the hard rock. Rocky Blyer. 
So wants to be in there. He'll get a shot. such a confined flea flicker that I don't think the Steelers secondary saw it. <laughs> Mel Blunt didn't for sure. He was right back in there. That's a, called a mini flea flicker. A mini flea flicker. A mini one. I love the play. You were, there it is again. You don't fool Mel Blunt very often. You know what? That ball was almost, that was catchable, I would say. It certainly It was. would have been a sensational catch, Stanley. I'll give you that. I talked nice about work. the balance in the New England attack. Passing, they've gained 88 yards. Rushing, 100 yards. Pretty good evidence. Second down, 10. I haven't seen him throw to Jackson. Steelers again threatening safety blitz. And now they drop out of it. Jorgen's already changed the play, however. They've done that a couple of times, Don. Yeah. And they catch Grogan. Well, he dabbed and he didn't get the defense he was looking for, or they didn't run the right patterns because nobody was there. He tried to get a little action out of those receivers by hand motion. Nothing happened. And that defense caught up with him. Steelers up there with threatening safety blitz. Grogan changing the play. Steelers dropping out of it. Six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Patriots over the Steelers, 13 to 6. Can have an overtime. Well, yeah, that's always a possibility. <laughs> Steelers have their home opening <laughs> next Sunday. They'll play the Houston Oilers. New England will be at home to the New York Jets. Third and ten. All 11 are at the line of scrimmage. Grogan tried to get it off, and he did. Oh, my God. Flag is down, and Mel Blunt catches Morgan at the five-yard line. What a fun play. Oh, boy, I can still see it again. Oh, I like that. Huh. Let's see what the penalty is. Well, let's see. Oh, oh they go. Oh, into oh. England. They'll bring it back. Broken <laughs> upset. Uh-huh. He says, wait a minute. Threatened the blitz and they came with it. Grogan switched it up, which you do in a situation like that. Went for the fly, and they're going to bring it all back. Illegal motion, left guard. Illegal left guard. motion, left guard. We see it again. It's a good call. Watch. That, that will be all pro John Hanna. Yeah. Yes. getting that ball off of it. I like that. <laughs> Grogan just went up, man. His stock went up. That Mel Blunt is something, too. Frank and I were talking earlier. I didn't realize how, how big that guy oh, is. Oh, yeah, he's I, huge. And really, he's a he's, he's, He hits like a linebacker. Hey, a lot the of MVP people, in the Pro Bowl game a few years back. A lot remember? of people feel he's the best man-to-man -man cornerback in the league. Uh-oh. <laughs> What's happening else? What's happening to oh, oh, Greenwood, Greenwood getting a little knee, but I'm told he'll be back in the game. 39 yard gain nullified by that penalty. Third down 15. Grogan fires for Francis high and just off the fingertips of Francis and then off the fingertips of Mel Blunt. Grogan angry over the call. But New England in perfect hand has a history of that. Last year they had gone ahead of Dallas and then they were ready to pour it on. As Grogan ran it in, but a key penalty on that play. Right, look at this, Harry. Look at He's really upset. Yeah. I don't know what. Somebody probably broke a pattern on him. Uh, he wasn't upset at Francis. If you don't get that interpretation from it, somebody ran a pattern wrong on him. Uh, yeah, but even if he was, I don't think he'd be that upset with Francis. Uh, I mean, you had sit and negotiate well, with him. He was still yeah. thinking about that penalty. Yeah. Eddie Harris, and this is Lynn Swan. Again, the Steelers will go for the block. They think Eddie Harris is a slow kicker. And he is slow. They almost get another one. Swan <laughs> indicates the fair catch. Let's it wisely go into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and it'll come out to the 20. That'll go and kick. 5.37 remaining in the third quarter, and we'll be back. Gentlemen, gentlemen, tonight we're brought together here by two things we all love. Good food and white beer from Miller. 
Take me around. Give me the carrots. Take me to save lives in the life of a hospital. A movie preview, The Lazarus Syndrome. 5.37 remaining in the third quarter. Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith, Howard Cosell. They'll also be traveling to Denver for Denver and Los Angeles on Thursday night. And a week from tonight, it'll be Atlanta and Philadelphia at Philadelphia. So hang around, be with us. First and 10, the Steelers. Flag is down. You saw the movement. Bradshaw gets Good it off to man. Harris, and he made a great scooping catch. Hey, that uh, also, uh, he made, a, I think, a good come off there, too, Franco. He was trying to go downfield, hit his safety valve. They had him pretty well covered downfield. Got to give Bradshaw a lot of credit. He was limping to the line. Remember, he had the damaged toe in the first half with sideline, the latter part of the second period, underwent x-rays, proved negative. Sprained toe. Here's the call coming up. Offside defense refused. Second down. Again, Terry Bradshaw given the option of having a first and five or a second and three. And he decides to go with his well. Sam limping a little. Second and two. Line. And he takes the yardage gain. Terry's tough. You don't have to worry about him. Franco uh, Harris. Oh, he's piled up right side over there. Oh, Lunsford. Julius Adams was line. there. Mel Lunsford. That's a tough team to run on. It'll be third down and three. This Sunday, we will have a baseball special for you. Sunday afternoon baseball, the game to be picked depending upon the pennant races. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Getting down to the end now in baseball. Cincinnati hanging in there. Montreal trying to hang in there. Montreal won a twin bill today. Pittsburgh split with the Phillies. Third and three. Pitch out. Franco Harris. No way. Man alive. Julius Adams sliding out there. Number 85 on the defensive end spot. And number 71 was also there. Ray Hamilton. Two big plays by that Pittsburgh defense. Hey, that could be a big play. And old buddy Hunt was out there, too. They had a whole bunch of them out there. I mean the New England defense. Forgive me, I was looking at the National League West. The Reds have beaten Atlanta, Frank. The Dodgers have shut out Houston, a two-hitter for Jerry Rice. So the Reds are back in first place over Houston. What has Seaver got now in consecutive wins? Is he still running it off? No. Well, he's still a good guy. <laughs> Great Colquitt. Stanley Morgan at the 33. to stay on top of that a little better. Well, it's all right. Get football season. I get fired up about this. We'll be returning to Foxborough in just a moment. Morgan shaking up on that punt return. He appears to be all right moving to the sideline. And we forgot to remind you, our telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited, so don't use it for anything. It used to be my job. Yeah, you blew it. Uh, I know it. I'll do better. I hope. I will. <laughs> Give me another chance. New England turn the Steelers back on a big third down situation. Carlos Pennywell is in there for Stanley Morgan, number 88. Grogan is back on first and 10. Uh-oh. And he throws it behind Pennywell. Well, he had him, too. He didn't miss him far, five, six yards. Well, he can't get angry about that one. Oh, I could. Second down, 10. Again, the Patriots over the Steelers, 13 to 6. Well, you know it, 40 shots that one, don't you? <laughs> Jack, John, and Rocky. That's because he's growing desperate. I know it. Oh, 
ball just over the 35 yard line of the New England Patriots. Quick handoff and it goes to Andy. The setback, Andy Johnson. Or rather, Horace Ivory, see, who I, has replaced Johnson. That's my fault, Frank. I get to. What do you call it when you see numbers? Well, anyway, I thought it was 32. Gain of three, third down, seven. Good protection, but no receiver open, and getting in there was Gary Dunn. He really did have them covered. He had four receivers out, and man, they had Steelers all around him. That's Gary Dunn. They, they look for big things from him. He can play all four of those positions along the line. Third year man out of Miami of Florida. 6'3, 250 pounder. Gary Dunn. You're going to hear that name a lot of years to come. Got word that Morgan bruised his back, but is expected to return. Here is Andy Dunn's disciple, Eddie Hay. You think Eddie Hay is getting a little shell shot back there, the rookie from Tulsa? Steelers put 10 guys at the line of scrimmage, and they don't make any bones about it. They're going to try to block it. He's hurrying. Then Swan. He is kicking it, too. Fair catch, call for, <laughs> as advised by Chuck Noll. He does not want to lose Len Swan. Swan, he doesn't like the fair catch, but he does at the 31-yard line. The Seagulls will have the ball there when we come back. 29, the Vancouver Whitecaps battle the Tampa Bay Rowdies for the NASL title, Saturday on ABC. Back in Foxborough, capacity crowd, over 61,000. AFC's Eastern Division champion New England Patriots leading Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers 13 to 6. Steelers first and 10. The ball at their own 31 yard line. Bradshaw limping away from the center. Looks out to Franco Harris and Franco Harris upended about the time the ball got there by Mike Hawkins. Once again there was no one to throw to. Coverage was excellent. Yeah, it was just reversed the time of before. It was the Steelers that had all of the Patriots covered. This time the Patriots did the same thing for the Steelers. Quickly, some more baseball scores. Angels beat the White Sox 6-5. to five. Kansas City behind Dennis Leonard. Suddenly red hot. Blank Minnesota 1-0. Angels lead by a game and a half over the Royals, who continue hot. Yanks crushed Boston 10-6. Guidry won his ninth in a row, 15 on the year. Baltimore, they're incredible. Won a twin bill from Toronto. Second down, 10. Franco Harris. Franco Harris frustrated a little bit tonight. Ambles for about eight yards. It'll be third down now and two. Elsie Greenwood, we understand, is out for the night. He has a sprained knee. That's bad news. He perhaps is the best of the front four. That's all the front six of needs. the Pittsburgh Steelers. This team is really injury riddled. He marked the ball at the 38 yard line. So it'll be third down and three. Bradshaw and Randy Grossman does not hold on. It would have been a first down. That's unusual. That was true. He is really a clutch receiver. Ball was bulleted, but Grossman could have had it. He's got it right out. It's a little quick turn in and slide to the middle. The ball is thrown. That's really right there. It's a little hand. That's what he's noted for is the great hands. Your sure hand. Sure he has that in there. Craig Colquick will do the putting for the Steelers. And Mike Haynes now is deep for New England, number 40. He came up four years ago. He was really something in punt returns. He doesn't like fair catching either. And he doesn't. Oh, those guys. Haynes to the 27-yard line following a 39 cold quit punt. Flag went down over there late. Flag far side of the field. So many times you you'll get a clipping call when a punt return man decides he can't get behind the screen that is set up to pick a line, as they call it, and the blocker is set to block, and the man coming downfield turns on him. Then you get the clip. So New England. Instead of their 26-yard line, will begin. Must be on their 13. Clipping number 80 on the run back. First down. Don Hasselbeck, the big tight end. The guilty New England Patriot. 2-0-2 remaining in the third quarter. 
Hope you've enjoyed your Labor Day. And if you plan to go somewhere later this evening, we also would like to advise you, please be careful. A lot of folks still out there putting around. On first down, this is Horace Ivory. Look at Ivory. <laughs> Super effort by an individual oh. making it on his own. Instead of a minus two, he got a plus nine. He got <laughs> somewhat confused back in there. Just said, oh, dodging them all. Let's see who. I know he's trying to get around some couple of Steelers. He said, now wait a minute here. That's Russ Francis he's going to come back at. Look out, Russ. That was Jack Hamlin who <laughs> missed that tackle. That's right. And <laughs> he, av he avoided Francis, who got in his way, and then went right between two Steelers. Yeah, I like that. That's Ron Johnson that got him, or he could have still been running. Leading rusher in preseason, Horse Ivory. Cunningham finds a big hole. Oh, that was. Pounds for the first down, out over the 35 to the 36. You don't see a lot of people do that to Pittsburgh. No, you don't. If they're right straight up the middle. Let's see why we can. That's for Ness over the middle. A good block by Lynn Cottis. Man, they got him open there. Dunn didn't fall back in time. Don't know where Lambert is. But that's Donnie Shell coming up from the safety. They just opened him up a good one there. Cunningham following Lynn Cottis. Found the cavity and way went. I'm sorry. On first and ten. <laughs> Andy Johnson. <laughs> Gets three. You do apologize. <laughs> That's as good a place as any to look it over. Horace Ivory really was the best running back the Patriots had during preseason. Had a good year last year. He averaged six, a little over six yards in that preseason, Frank. Mm -hmm. Had 690 plus yards a year ago after missing most of 77 with a thigh injury. Seconds ticking off here in the third quarter. I don't think we're going to get a playoff. No, probably not. And we will not. There it is. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, New England 13, the Pittsburgh Steelers 6 will return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. Beginning Wednesday on ABC's World News Tonight, a special assignment, Northern Ireland, the bitter divisions. Who and what are the IRA? What is their political and financial support in America? Is there a resurgence of the Protestant counterforce? This plus all the important deals of the day, Wednesday on ABC's World News Tonight. Daryl Stingley will be leaving Schaefer Stadium momentarily. He came back home tonight. Again, for the first time since that tragic occurrence back in August, August 12th, a year ago. And if you could spell courage, I think you'd have to spell it Stingley. So I move that right arm right there, waving. Hello to mom. New England has the football. Second down and seven. This is Horace Ivory. Good. <laughs> oh, and he's Good. putting on some fancy moves. Short of the first down out to the 44-yard line, but a nifty pickup of six. It'll be third and one. Gary Dunn finally was able to swat him down. And Ivory uh -oh. is slow getting up. And he's holding that right knee. Whoa. Oh, boy. He really made a nice cut in there. He had it to the outside. They had it blocked off. Made a quick stop. Cut back in there. He grabbed that knee almost immediately, Frank. The right knee, and I don't think there's any question that Horace Ivory knows something is amiss. He says something went wrong right there. Good movie. Robin Cole turns him back to the inside, number 56 for the Steelers. And and John Hanna was out there. Down. And Tom Beasley made the stop, and Horace Ivory is down at the 43 yard line. We'll be returning in just a moment. College football kicks off the new season. Bear Bryant's Alabama Crimson Tide battle Georgia Tech Saturday on ABC. Horace Ivory being assisted from the field. You saw a few moments ago he went down in the arms of Gary Dunn and Tom Beasley rolled over, grabbed his knee. Walking very carefully, I'm sure the trainers 
checked it out rather thoroughly before they had let him walk off the field. Uh, we'll not speculate. We'll try and get a further report. Hate to see these injuries. I just bumped into Dan Rooney of the Steelers front office. He said, I don't know what it's coming to. I've never seen a team so racked up as ours. I don't know how bad Joe Green is. I don't know how bad Greenwood is. Penny's out for the year. How much more can they do to us? I said, well, you can keep having Matt Barr kick. J.T. Thomas, Larry Brown, you can go on and on with the Steelers. They've got some problems. Sam Cunningham gets the first down. He said, Don, did you see him kick for Penn State? I said, yeah, he was great there. What happened to the power in his leg? Oh, well, I bet he gets a lot stronger as the days go on. You know what I mean? This is also... Uh, Wait a minute. Cunningham is slow getting up. No, he's on his feet. He said they moved the ball back uh, a little bit. Sam uh, said, wait a minute. Here, I was all the way up here. They're going to measure it. Looked to me like he had it. I thought he did, too. Now he got it. They just want to make it a little closer. <laughs> Sam says he put it up there. It's working on Ivory's right ankle. Oh, I like that abundance of talent I've talked about on that New England team. You don't want to lose a player of Ivory's quality. Well, I really thought he grabbed his knee. Man, that's what I thought he got as soon as he rolled over there. First and ten, New England. We're in the fourth quarter. Grogan, play action. Going to the big man, Francis, he has another first down inside the 45-yard line. Jack Lambert drifted back there to make the stop. Well, it's about time Grogan started hitting. He had hit for 88 yards in the first half. But in the second half, up until that throw, he had hit for only 11 yards, been sacked twice for minus 23. Look at Francis. He's working on Robin Cole, who's trying to hold him in. Lambert took a quick check up the middle to make sure that it's not a run. You see a slight fake right there in the middle. Lambert hesitates for a moment, comes back. Couldn't catch up with Francis. Ball just inside the 45-yard line. And off goes the Cunningham, and Cunningham cannot get away from number 76. That's John Banaszak. Patriots 13, the Steelers 6. Both of them opening the season tonight in defense of their divisional crowns, and of course the Steelers. Coming off a third Super Bowl victory over the Dallas Cowboys last January. Don't forget, we got a Thursday night special from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado this Thursday night. Two of the top teams in the National Football League. The Bronx at home to the Rams. Second and ten. Cunningham gets to the outside, and he finds a big opening. Oh, oh. Right down. Boy, they're going to really be upset on this one. Oh, that's some nifty running, but again, the flag is down. A couple of flags are down. You like to see Sam Van go. He's kind of a fast Larry Zucker. Probably was that cutback lock. There's another new rule, too, that uh, let's see. Yeah. That cutback zone has been expanded three to five yards now. One of the new rules. All of them basically designed to prevent the injuries. Nick Mark That's a back to the 43. The Here's the call. Crack back, block, crack back. Number 88, 15 yards, still second down. Carlos Pennywell, the wide receiver, as it generally is when you get that call. Ivory, we've been told, has twisted his right ankle. I'm sorry about that, but I'm glad it's not the knee. Be back tonight. The ball all the way back to New England's 43-yard line, where it's second down and 23. Mm. That's when you get a pretty good pass rush. Steelers <laughs> threaten the blitz and then drop out of it. Grogan reads it well, and he goes out to Andy Johnson. Tell me, right? Andy Johnson's been playing a good ball game tonight. That's a good play, too, to get half of that thing back. Half of 
of the back to the 46 yard line. Yep. Now you got a big one, third in the bunch. Don mentioned Andy Johnson, and he's one of those solid players. Not spectacular, but he's there when you need him. He can receive, he can run, he can block. He's a good football player all around. He can throw. He's an athlete. If he has to, he's great on the option pass, having played quarterback in college. What, Frank? I was there running back who came back from surgery. He missed all of 77 and came back last year and gained about 700 yards. Right. Grogan did get half of it in collaboration with Andy Johnson. His third down now in 12. Look out too high. Oh, and that's Mike Wagner with the interception. And a flag goes down. They're saying he did not get it, but he trapped it. One official had a better view than the other. He said, no, he trapped it. <laughs> There's also some words going on out there <laughs> with <laughs> Francis, and that appears Ron Johnson had a slight disagreement. It's incomplete. There is no foul on the play. Pass incomplete. Fourth down. The flag went down to Mark, where I suppose that Wagner went down. Yeah, and... he's right. Look at it. It's on the oh, ground. Oh, man. Perfect, Perfect call. Yeah, that's great. That's why they're down there on the field, isn't it? I'll tell you, they get a lot of criticism, but more times than not, they are right. They are really in a fishbowl in this modern day of football. Replays. Our little guys down there are great technicians, running things back and forth, checking them out. Fourth down, Lynn Swan at his 12-yard line. Winning the punt of Eddie Hare, and Eddie Hare got off a of beauty. Ah, uh -huh. and it bounds into the end zone. The Patriots could not get to it. They were hustling down there, but they could not stop it. So the Steelers will have the ball at their own 20-yard line when we come back. They say I'm rough. They say I'm mean. But that's the toughest Steeler I've ever seen. There's only one Steeler I trust with my girl, and it's done to you guys. <laughs> Uniroyal presents the Steeler Radio. It's built tough with two steel belts, and it's tough to beat when you look at its price. Now I've got four tough Steelers that escort me everywhere. The Uniroyal Steeler. You want a tough tire at a price that's fair? You want Uniroyal there. The key's supposed to be under the steps. Hey, here's a note. Gentlemen, my country estate is at your disposal. <laughs> there might even be a little something in the refrigerator regards hand. Let it be low and brown. Low and brown. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Here's the Hank. <laughs> Wherever he is. <laughs> We have 11.48 remaining in the game, at least potentially. 13 to 6. The possibilities of an overtime, of course, exist. That's when Chet Forty really, really comes alive in those overtime games. Sherman, Texas. Hot doggies. The home of Miller Barber. Sherman, Texas. And Austin College, it says, too. Mr. X. We're going to wide tittle also. On first and 10. Play action by Bradshaw. Stallworth and Stallworth has the ball. He's out to the 40-yard line. This thing has really hadn't moved that rapidly the last uh, half. It's been kind of, but they're only seven points behind, right? Game has become sluggish and has lagged. I thought why is from Marshall, Frank. That was a uh, was that Stallworth that made that catch? 82 is Stallworth. Slipped right in there. We have a new NFL opening season attendance record, 840,436 turned out to watch pro football on this opening weekend. That includes tonight's crowd of 61,000 plus. First and 10, the Steelers trailing by seven at their own 40-yard line. Screen. Oh, and a nice one. Do they have it set up? Benny cutting in the tight end screen. And the Steelers have a first down again down at the 44-yard line. <laughs> Get a little something moving here. Steelers remind me a little bit offensively of a truck, of a truck. They just, they don't have a lot of, oh, well, fancy grace or finesse. They just, 
all of a sudden they hang in there, they hang in there, and then all of a sudden they pounce on you. Well, when they're all healthy, they do a little more than that. Well, that's, that's when the truck starts downhill. That's when it really picks up speed. Mm -hmm. uh, once they get you, though, then they really go for the juggler. Franklin Harris with only 21 yards, uh, 56 yards tonight on 21 attempts. Bradshaw going for Swan. There will be no interference on that. <laughs> Ray Claiborne slowed up. Swan looking for the ball. Ran into him. There will be no interference call. I always think this is a smart move anyway because the defensive back, you see, Swanee's coming down. He's got him in good position. But if I was a defensive back and the offensive guy fell, I would immediately turn around and accuse him of offensive pass interference too. And Swanee <laughs> is awfully close to it. He says, I can't catch it, so I'm going to grab you by the leg. But Claiborne did turn around, pointed the finger, but they were right on top of it. No call. Swanee doesn't listen. He was involved in that imbroglio in the Super Bowl with Benny Barnes. Dallas. Second down, 10. Crowd coming to life. Bradshaw. Oh, and he has a bunch of red shirts on him. Oh, boy. There were a lot of them there. Steve Nelson was there as he has been all night. He has played a super game. Number 57. Tony McGee, number 78, was there. Once again, there was no one to throw to. Looks like Nelson is down a little bit. Nelson, I see where they all came from. Really, they had pretty good protection there for a while. He's got time to throw. Steps up. And bang on. Mike Hawkins actually there first. They had a little trouble. He says, wait a minute, son. You just, <laughs> what in the world was that? Swanee says, you can't do that to me. How many chucks? <laughs> Got a new disco move. Well, that's not, you can't do that, can you? No. Somebody did something wrong out there. Third and 19. Bradshaw hangs it high. And incomplete. Ray Claiborne back there battling. And that was the same ball worth. It's the same two something in it that got it going to play before. And Swanee just slung him down. Let's see what happens this time. Swanee's getting a real workout now. Tell you, you will not run away from Ray Claiborne. I'll you tell sure you that. Can. That Swan does go for the ball, doesn't he? He really gets up there. That Claiborne, Claiborne. Uh, out of the University of Texas, was electrically timed at 9-4 for the 100. He can move. Craig Colton will kick. Deep is Mike Haynes for New England. Oh, that's a beautiful kick by oh. Colton. And oh. 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 He oh. puts it out of bounds at the four-yard line. 49-yard punt out of bounds at the four. That'll tell you why more and more teams are drafting putters. They're not trying to create them. He was a third-round pick out of the University of Tennessee last year. And he does put the New England Patriots in a lot of... Major Olympics exclusively on EBC. Can America's Jim Denny win the gold at home? And Lake Placid is not that far away, either geographically from where we are, or chronologically. Innsbruck does not seem that far away either. New England, leading 13 to 6. Greg Coquit put the ball out at the four-yard line. They have a first and 10 at their own four. Cunningham given the assignment to get it out of there, and he gets about three yards. Steve Furness made a good move inside there, trying to get him deep. Just barely missed him. Look at that graphic, how even the time of possession has been between the two teams thus far in the contest. We're at 9.27 and beginning the countdown. Second down, seven. First-year coach, Ron Earhart. Andy Johnson. Ooh. Boy, there are some violent collisions, collisions when they turn that corner. Jack Ham hustling over there, number 59. If they don't get a first down here, Frank, the Steelers have been charging 10 guys all night anyway on this punt. And although the rookie has punted really well, he's going to have his first shot at one that's really backed up in his own end zone, leading by seven points. So I would say this one would be a big one they'd like to have. Well, there's a Steeler down. down out of bounds. It's Ron Johnson, who's 
off on the side. There he is, number 29, a second-year man out of Eastern Michigan who really came in and did a great job for the Steelers coming up last year when JT Tom Thomas couldn't play. And I'll tell you, JT Thomas is not ready to play again. He's the backup man to Ron Johnson. Well, he's been hurt again. He, he was looking great. Brain knee. They're hurting in that secondary. As a matter of fact, they have a... Well, he's had an enormous number of injuries. Hurting all of them. Dwayne Woodruff, 49, has come in for the Steelers. He's one of five Steeler rookies. Interesting thing about these Steelers, there's not a player out there that was not signed originally by the Steelers. 39 of them were drafted. Six of them are free agents. Interesting, isn't it, when you consider that the two teams that went to the Super Bowl are all homegrown, the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've drafted wisely, searched the free agent market. Well, Ron appears to be all right. So do the New England Spirits. I noticed that myself. A little snake dance, they call that. Right about the end, Third down, five. Should have mastered that move when you were playing. It's an important play for New England. That really is. They lead by seven. They go with a quick count, and they get a safety blitz and almost a safety. Rogan all the way back, and now the pressure is really going to be on the rookie, Eddie Hare, because New England is not going to be able to kick from a spread punt in this fourth down. Let's look at it again. Full blitz. They bring him on. Donnie Shell, number 31, is the guy that comes from the safety, and nobody picked him up. And you're right, they almost got a safety. Grogan struggled out of that end zone to keep from giving him two. You might wonder whether that would be a good thing. Go ahead and give him two. Right. Come back out and punt. Give that a little thought. Yeah. Grogan had a lot of things on his mind. And not with 8.22 remaining. Okay. All right. Eddie Hare, who kicks with two and a half steps, will not have to kick from a tight formation. They will not get good coverage, although Swan has been instructed to fair catch the ball. He may get a chance because they won't get good coverage. That was a heck of a punt. And he did not fair catch. Whoa. Oh, it was a great downfield tackle. I think that's that, that rookie car. It see. is. Alan Clark from Northern Arizona, and that was a tremendous open field tackle on Len Swan and not a bad punt by Eddie Hare. You bet. That was a good punt. They decided not to rush it. You'll see him back up trying to set up a return, and obviously they changed their mind. Gonna let Swanee try to run this one back. 48 yards. Swan thought he had a chance. Look at that car. And look at Clark. We were told by their PR people, says every kicking team, you look for Carr, he'll be down there. He's a rookie that made He's the team as much right about that. That reason is anything out. Steelers still, good field position. They trail by a touchdown and a conversion. They have the ball at the 47-yard line, their own 47. Bradshaw, screen to the flanker, Stallworth. Look out, He's look gone. out, he can move. Stallworth with an empty move at midfield gets inside the 20-yard line where the touchdown is saved by Ray Claiborne. I'll tell you, he almost slipped past Claiborne. Went he, up in the air. You'll see it again. All right. Had a good block right there. Man, I can't see who that is either. Look at him bounce off of those guys. That was Sam down. Davis. Right he, you're there. Sam Davis with the key block that sprung Stallworth, and then he did a bunch on his own. Inside eight minutes. Look at the offense. You couldn't see a game more even statistically. And the one that matters most, most the Pats are ahead, 13-6. Swan right, Stallworth left. Randy Grossman is the tight end. Have been flanked out. All right. Look at the ball. Lost the ball, and Mike Haynes comes up with it. Big, big play. Big turnover. Golly, Sidney Thornton bobbled the ball. Lost it. And Mike Haynes, a genuine all-pro, makes the big play once again. Break goes up on the lead block. Claiborne's pushed out pretty well there, too. The ball bounces loose. And look Mike at me. Haynes. Yeah, Haynes, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it was Bedoin that came up and knocked it loose. But Thornton was carrying it out there rather recklessly, and the handle came loose. Well, they've dodged a couple of silver bullets. That punt got them out of a hole, and now a turnover. I, 
Haynes out of way. Arizona State, and he has been superb all four of his pro years. And here comes Sam Cunningham. Line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Maybe even lost a half a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Second down and 11, rather. Everything in this game is even except for the score. We're going to pause five seconds quickly and allow our stations along the line to identify themselves. You're watching WTAE-TV, Channel 4, in Pittsburgh. I just thought of something. How can you pause five seconds quickly? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, those are the people that are bringing you the game. Second and 11. Grogan, down he goes. It was Gary Dunn who got to him first. He is slow getting up. Beasley was also there. This was not the best series of downs in the world as you look at this play again to be conservative. Yeah, I like that Gary Dunn, but look at him yeah, done. He made a good release right there in the front. Ashlyn kind of tried to block him. Just pushed him aside and he's rushing right on back. Yeah, Gary Dunn plays with a whole lot of intensity. Six yard loss. It'll be third and 16. Dunn playing in place of Green, who got hurt in the warm-up before the game. I'll see Greenwood went down a little later on with the knee. The Steelers are hurting in their front four. Cunningham on the flare. And he, and he maybe gets a couple yards, three yards, and New England's going to have to punt again. There's Mike Haynes. Boy, that kid can fly. <laughs> The two of them, Haynes and Claiborne, two of the men we found in the administration building before the game visiting with Daryl Sting. Here's Eddie Hare again, again under pressure. Good athlete from Tulsa, was drafted by Montreal as a baseball player right out of high school. And Lenny Swan standing back at his 40-yard line. They go for it, and either they got a finger on it or he just lost it off the side of his foot. They've been pressuring him all night. Making him hurry, and they're going to mark it at the 34 yard line. I thought somebody got a piece of it, Frank. I think he lost it off the side of his foot. I really do. I think he really? just, yeah, I think he just, it was a hurried drop. Looked like to me, hit it off the side of his foot. Who knows? He's a rhythm kicker at two and a half steps. It won't be long before he gets it down to two. First and ten, the Steelers. Again, they have the ball. Good field position inside the 35-yard line of New England. 4.54 on the clock. Steelers down by seven points. I get the feeling that really made a lot of difference right there. Bradshaw going for Swan. Or rather, Stallworth. He has it. Steeler first down at the 22-yard line. Right. Hamilton out at the moment. Little dizzy, a little bit shaken up. Bradshaw limping more noticeably. You know, I just saw a catch by John Stallworth in just in watching the Steelers of a, as I have over the past five years. He had a lot of nagging injuries for a, the first three or four years. And in the last two years, he has been superb. And it's not a coincidence that those have been the best two years of Lynn Swan's career. He doesn't get that double coverage anymore on first and ten. Bradshaw wide open. Bobby Dern, how did he get Sidney so Thornton? Well, they have a way of doing it. Rolled out of the backfield. He should have been picked up by a linebacker. They probably totally ignored him because he is not known as a receiver. And he was wide open. He was wide open. My gosh, this thing, I told you, you know that thing? I, you can just feel things. I just knew that was going to be it. We're going to be here for a while. We are a conversion away from a tie ball game. Matt Barr. He missed his first attempt tonight. Granted, it was a bad snap. Not so this time. We're tied at 13 with 4.09 on the clock. All right, let's see if we can pick it up. I'll tell you, they gave you play action, Don. That helped. See, Thornton just came out from the other side of the backfield. The fake was to Franco, and somebody just missed him. That's all. You're right. He watched that one in, didn't he? Oh, he looked it over. We'll be back in a moment. Wherever you grew up,
up. Going home these days can be quite a surprise. Because everywhere you go, America is remodeling. So good to see the folks again. So good to see you. So many things to share. So good to see the home I knew and love. And at Georgia Pacific, we're helping more Americans remodel with our products than ever before for living space. Always knew it had. Or enjoying space. Great possibilities. And you can find the building materials you need at thousands of our registered dealers everywhere. Like pre-cut wood products, the plans, the ideas, the help you need to do projects yourself. Because at Georgia Pacific, we see America's older homes as one more resource we can't afford to waste. Daddy, you haven't changed a thing. Georgia Pacific. Great. Oil, gas, coal, gypsum, timber, and the skill to manage them. Tied at 13, 409 remaining in the game. Matt Barr to kick off. Alan Clark is deep. Barr kicks it high, but again short. Alan Clark at the 11 yard line. And this time the youngster does not find the opening. He gets to the 26th. That's it. And Dwayne Woodruff, a rookie from Louisville, is down there to make the tackle for the Steelers. Now is when things get antsy. You want to hang on to the football, you want to avoid the penalties, and score some points all at the same time. Well, if ever New England figured to win a game, was positioned to win a game against the Steelers, this was it. The Steelers racked by injuries. Andy Johnson, Sam Adams, 61 in lead. And Johnson uses Adams, cuts back to the inside, and gets a gain of about eight yards out to the 33-yard line, where it'll be second down and two. It was a heady run. Using Adams as Frank described. 337. Mark counting. They mark it inside the 33, so we'll call it second down and three. There he is. 6'5, 205 pounder. Howard has already told you he's just a good little man at about everything you need done on a football field. Earl Jackson in motion. Johnson gets the call. He finds a big opening, and he gets up close to midfield with the 48. New England first down. It was Jack Lambert that made the stop. Adam, let's see. I think this is going to be overdone. Look here. Good block by Adams. Nice move by Hannah coming in on the inside. Little lead block. Oh, boy. Also by Cunningham. They, they just knocked him out of there. Hannah buried Lambert. He did. Hannah is a great player. Likes to complain a lot. Likes to talk a lot. But out on that field, nobody better at the position. Not in the whole league. And he's rather large, 265. First and 10, the ball at the 48-yard line of the Patriots. That's Russ Francis in motion. Sam Cunningham. Nowhere on the left side. He's going to lose about three. Tom Beasley was there first, I believe, along with John Banizak. The guy will take the rap if New England loses. There's John Smith, the Britisher. Getting the leg ready if they can get to field goal position. Should the Pats lose this game, the guy will take the rap in the New England press as the guy's been getting it all along. Steve Broke. Second down, 13. And I believe Grogan again anticipated a different move by either Francis or Cutting or Jackson. Or maybe even Cunningham. Cunningham was out in that pattern too, mm -hmm. Break coming out of there. I don't know what he was doing. And we're going to get the two-minute warning. It's all tied up at 13. Defensively, Lambert will go over and chat with Chuck Noll. Brogan has already moved over to his sidelines to talk it over with Ron Earhart. Yankee Stadium. We lined up these 40 American cars and left their lights on for one hour, two hours, two and a half hours, and then... They all started. They all had maintenance-free diehards. The diehard. It batted a thousand in Yankee Stadium. Only at Sears. Here's to good friends. A toast. Here's to a vanishing breed. Bill Evans, bachelor. The end of a perfectly good ladies' man. To Bill Evans, a free man. 
13 more hours. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Speech! Speech! Come on, you guys. You're beautiful. We have 158 remaining to play in the fourth quarter of play here at Foxborough. It's all tied up. The New England Patriots 13. Terry Bradshaw hit Sidney Thornton for a 21-yard touchdown a short while ago. That tied it up. Right now, the Patriots are looking over a third down and 13 with the football at their own 40-yard line. Rogan not having a spectacular night. But how many quarterbacks do against the Steelers? Deflected and up in the air. Man, he got popped. Grogan, who has been on the ground many times tonight, is down there once again. Going into that, he had four sacks, minus 36 yards. His net passing yardage on the night, 87. 161 yards for New England, Russia. So they didn't get the field goal opportunity. Eddie Hare has punted seven times. Done a good job and tremendous pressure. Again, the Steelers, both their punt returners, T. Bell and Jim Smith, have been injured. They can't play, so Lynn Swan's back there. You just saw him standing at the 20, and they are rushing 10 men on every punt. He kicked, and another, he kicked another fluffer. But he gets a fairly good bounce, and it's going to be at the 31-yard line. So the Steelers will take over with 142 remaining at their own 31-yard line. And that time, Eddie Hare had a good average going. He kicked one 14 a while ago. This one went 24. Three timeouts. Both teams have three timeouts. Steelers again will be home in Pittsburgh next week against the Houston Oilers, and the New England Patriots will entertain the Jets here at Foxborough. Now we're having an indication of a referee's timeout. I think they're trying to quiet the music a little bit. It's a little noisy down there. We were down there earlier this evening, and it, the speakers on the sidelines would make it very difficult for the quarterback to call his plays. And that was the situation. We're ready to go. Bradshaw trying to get a screen off to his tight end Benny Cunningham and New England wouldn't let him off the line of scrimmage and the fans are really screaming about that as that's the throw away and Benny Cunningham was trying to get out into the pattern but somebody had a double arm lock on him Bradshaw definitely hobbling all second half definitely hampered has to have affected his efficiency yet Pittsburgh hung in there with defense even with Green out Greenwood out Penny out really remarkable under the circumstances second and ten all right Franco Harris nailed for a loss of a couple that was a Richard Bishop who has been playing in there a lot for Ray Hamilton tonight. So it's going to be third down at 13. And New England is going to stop the clock. They want to win this thing in regulation if they can. Don't forget Saturday NCAA college football is coming your way here on ABC. That'll follow the soccer bowl which will match Vancouver who had that big victory over the New York Cosmos this past weekend. Tampa Bay of course is in there. They've been in the soccer bowl three times and then immediately following well you're going to have Alabama versus Georgia Tech. Alabama number one last year. Georgia Tech coached by Pepper Rogers. He was a fine collegiate coach. And they've got that good young quarterback Mike Kelly coming up. That's Saturday and Thursday night. We'll be in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado, for the Broncos and the Los Angeles Rams. You're high on Mike Kelly, Frank. I'm high on a kid named Ford from Meredith's alma mater, SMU. SMU. Yeah, Mike is. Uh, he's going to be a good one, Howard. 
or he is already, I guess you'd say, right? They got some good horses down there. Mind you, again, the time for our start in Denver will be 8.30 Eastern time. Terry Bradshaw limping back in. We've told you about him leaving in the second quarter for X-rays, coming back out to open the second half. But he's going a bit sore right now. It's really going to hurt in the morning. Third down, 13. New England stopped the clock with 124 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Stallworth is open. And Stallworth stepped out of bounds at the 45, and he's got the first down. Ace. Stops the clock at 114. Good job, I think, by Terry that time. You'll notice that he got some pressure, uh, dropped a little bit deep, did a slight scramble to the left, picked up Stallworth, who did a good job of coming back to meet that ball. Look at, look at him strong arm that. Yep, he does have that arm, doesn't he? That's Mike Haynes. Yep, that's where he stepped up. 114, and the Steelers have three timeouts. Stallworth now six receptions on the night for 95 yards. I've got a feeling at old Matt Barr is going to have a chance to redeem that missed extra point here in a little while. Bradshaw in trouble. Well, maybe I'm wrong. And did he get it off? No, they're going to bring it back to the 40. They say his knee had touched. <laughs> a little I think that bit of roughnecking around there. I'll tell you, that could be as a result of the new rule. That's right. The referee has got to, all the officials are alerted. Anytime the quarterback is in an obvious grasp of a defender, they are to blow a quick whistle. Again, another rule instituted this year. And the idea is safety, but Bradshaw is a big, strong dude, and he gets a lot of them off in the arms of defenders. Now, that's when they're going to whistle it. You see right now yep. in the back. Of You're right. Tony waving his hand, so it was a new rule. Good call, Giff. Second down, 15. Third sack of the night for New England. Uh-huh. This will be the fourth. Uh -huh. Back to the 29-yard line. That time it was Rod Schoke. Yeah, he's having some ugly things to say to Terry. <laughs> Schoke got the sack, but it was the middle of that line. Elm now you Lunsford see. and Hamilton that caused Bradshaw to get out of the pocket. Look at that. That's Sugar Bear that had a clean shot at him, and he had to make him move up. No, Rod Schoke came in and put him away. And New England stops the clock once again with 35 seconds. They would like to force the Steelers to punt the football, give them field position, and try and win it in regulation. But the Patriots now are down to one timeout. Might be a good chance to see them come in and try to put that pressure on the punter. They, we haven't seen New England do that really that much tonight. But they do have some gifted punt return guys. I imagine they would rely on that too. 35 seconds. Son of a gun. He Third down can break it. Clayburn can break it. The rookie Sanford can break it. Third down, 24, and I think Pittsburgh now is thinking of terms. Let's get it into overtime. They will be a little bit careful with how they put the football up in the air. If like indeed they even put it in the air. John lost him a contact lens. He ain't putting that baby back in there. That's really done a lot. You know, a lot of players that wouldn't be able to play if it wasn't for contact lists. They've got them now where you can put them in there and leave them. Third and 24. Stallworth comes in again. New England now with one timeout. Kind of a nice opening for the new coach here, don't you think? I'm not so sure. Well, I mean, uh, at least he's right in here, you know. I mean, they've got a lot of action going. As quickly as they cheer you, they can boo you. If Ron wins the game, he's a temporary hero. If he loses, it's just as quickly a go. Well, a little confusion on the field. Now we're ready to go at third and 24, 35 seconds remaining. Bradshaw will put it in the air. Maybe. Oh, and I go are going to get him for throwing it away, I believe. Yeah, I think they are, too. There was a receiver fairly close, but it was an underhanded toss. Tony McGee was breathing down Bradshaw's neck, and they're going to get him for throwing the football away. And I'll tell you, that could help. 
27 seconds left. He was trying to spring out to the outside. Looked to me all along there. But they was a good move by McGee. That little roll to the outside. Bishop's coming in there. Boy, that McGee, look at those strides. McGee's got it. Yep. Golly. He said, I don't want that ball. That's a tough penalty because that is also penalty plus loss of down, and that means it'll be fourth down, and Craig Colquitt will be punting from somewhere around the 10-yard line. They put Stanley Morgan back in to receive the punt at the 36-yard line. You do have to speculate that New England's going to go for it. They have one timeout. Pittsburgh senses that. They tighten up. Colquitt gets it off. Morgan calls for the fair catch at the 43. 21 seconds on the clock. New England has one timeout. All right, I like it. Here we go. It'll take a bit of doing against this Pittsburgh defense to get into field goal position. You're absolutely correct. If we go to overtime, there'll be a three-minute break. Toss of the coin. We'll be in sudden death. Any word from our director? He's ready. Twenty one seconds and one timeout. The receivers are Harold Jackson splitting now to the left. Out to the right comes Stanley Morgan, the tight end, number 81, Russ Francis. Francis wide open and Again, Grogan under pressure was pounded to the turf once again. Could not get it to him. But the crowd is taking it out on that young man. And indeed, as I poked my head out of our booth a couple of minutes ago, the writer on the Boston Globe said, why don't they put in our quarterbacks? Well, those things happen. Meaning How he's taking it out on Grogan. Didn't uh, Francis look uh, extremely open to you that last time when he yeah. just kind of stand there by himself? Right down the middle. They must be trying to protect those sidelines instead of that middle shot. They got one shot down the middle, 16 seconds to go. 18, 17, whatever. Second and 10. 16 seconds. That's it. Grogan had the time yeah. that time. There were no receivers open. He's dropped back at the 38 yard line. Loss of five. John Banizak was in there. Tom Beasley, number 65. Banizak, 76. They were both there. Now you got to consider, well, now do you want to really take the chance because you don't have that much time? Maybe they decide they, they're going to use it, aren't they? Grogan calls his last time out. Moves over to the sideline. And like Pittsburgh a few moments ago, if we're going to win it, we're going to win it in overtime. Again, in the overtime period, there are two timeouts per team. So our first Monday night telecast has, <laughs> oh, not yet in actuality, but we are nine seconds away from sudden death. Well, you know, I remind him, I saw my buddy Kurt Gowdy here in the stands, and he always calls it sudden victory. That's Kurt's tag. He says that's a sudden victory, but it's a... Uh, Sudden death, sudden victory. It's going to be sudden, let's hope. Didn't we have New England in our last overtime game, losing to Cleveland at Cleveland? A couple of years back, I think that was it. About four years ago, I believe. 30 to 27. So New England got on the scoreboard first. It took a long time for the Steelers to come back and tie it up, which they did on a 21-yard touchdown pass. Bradshaw to Sidney Thornton. And they have been back and forth in midfield. The remaining minutes of here in the fourth quarter. And once again, as we go into a sudden death overtime, there'll be a three-minute period. There'll be a coin toss. And they'll... Play to the first score. Grogan hangs it high. Looking for pass interference, probably. Doesn't get it. Russ Francis was down there with the entire Steelers secondary. <laughs> 
And there's time for one more of those plays. That's what the defenders have to be very careful about, that they do not give up a pass interference call because the period would not end on a defensive foul. New England. They were 11-5 last year. The Steelers 14-2. They lost only to Houston and Los Angeles. And then New England going into the playoffs were shocked with the departure of their coach, Chuck Fairbanks. And Houston came up and also came on after defeating Miami, and they trounced the Patriots right here. And it's picked off by Dwayne Woodruff. Oops, Wayne fell down. Regulation time is over. I think he's still going on, Frankie Lateral. What is going on there? Now it's over. Well, it kind of summed it up, didn't it? Yeah. So we are going to go to overtime. There will be a toss of the coin. We will have a three-minute intermission. And we'll play some more football. Oh, boy. Welcome back, Don. Thank you. Nice to be here on Labor Day. And we'll pick up the toss of the coin and alert our stations all on the line that they're going to throw it to them in a moment. Jack Lambert's out there. Steve Nelson is out there and Russ Francis for New England. Now Joe Green, defensive captain, comes out to join teammate Jack Captain Lambert. Green will call it, call it in the air, please. He called heads. It is tails. New England has won the toss. <laughs> this goal will you defend? New England will receive the football. They did at the opening of the game. They went the length of the field and scored. Now, there are your game stats. First downs, Pittsburgh a slight edge. Rushing, New England the edge. Passing, Pittsburgh a big edge. Frank? We'll be back after this word from our local stations. Sunday, Cheryl Ladd and Henry Winkler host the 31st Annual Emmy Awards. We always wanted to see San Francisco. Now we can. Now on TWA, everyone can get 30 to 50% off all over the U.S. I'm getting half fare to California. We're finally going on a second honeymoon. Yeah, finally. Everyone can get up to 50% off on TWA all over the U.S. But book now. Seats are going fast. We're going on a second honeymoon. Come and fly away on a super holiday. Take your you want to fix up your home without wrecking your budget? Everything you need to do it yourself is right here at Busy Beaver's Lumber and Home Fix-Up Store. We have Armstrong ceilings and Georgia Pacific paneling, Stanley hand tools and Black & Decker power tools. Everything you need, including free expert advice. Busy Beaver do-it-yourself centers. We'll show you how it's done. This week's Busy Beaver home improvement specials include roofing shingles, just $20.69 per square. It's all down here. All in the Family premieres Monday, September 17th at 5.30. WTAE TV Channel 4 Pittsburgh. Steve Grogan and the New England Patriots, along with the Steelers, must labor on. Actually, here in the East, it is no longer Labor Day. <laughs> Jack Lambert. He's labored a little. All tied at 13 after regulation play. Chuck No looking for his 100th overall victory as a professional coach. Entering his 11th year of play, a remarkable record. It all got tied up this way. Sidney Thornton comes out of the backfield, number 38. New England overlooks him. Well, why shouldn't they? Sidney Thornton has caught six passes in two years. This was a big one. That tied it up. 21 yards. Bradshaw to Sidney Thornton. Bradshaw playing on a damaged toe. Are the rookie from Penn State out of the conversion? And that's where we are. All right, down to it. Let's go down to it. I'll tell you what. 
Wait a minute. Wasn't Denver, Minnesota our last overtime game? That's right. A year ago. Yeah, that That's was it. our last one. Now at the very top of the telecast, Don Meredith and his discussion of whether or not New England had a quarterback problem. Told you that the fans were not happy with him. He's been getting his rips in the newspapers. And if he had not had a decent first half, Don suggested we might see Kavanaugh all one in the second half. But you're not going to see a new quarterback now in the overtime. Hey, Grogan is 11 for 31, but he's also has been on his tail about 11 times also. Oh, yes. He's he has done. not had any passing room back there to speak of. He's been lucky to get off as good as he has. Matt Barr kicks it off. Alan Clark, the rookie from Northern Arizona, is deep, but it will not get to him. Taken there instead by Rick Sanford, the number one draft pick out of South Carolina. And Sanford gets it out to the 27-yard line. So here we go. Hope you don't have anything big planned early in the morning out there. <laughs> What are your plans, Skiff? Well, it's already early morning here. I kind of like this, though. I do, Just to kind of leave it up in the air, you play a whole game, and all of a sudden you wind up in a tie, and they figure some sort of ridiculous percentage, and now at least you get something definitive. Well, we had two overtime games yesterday. England beating the Jets. Atlanta beating New Orleans. First and ten. New England has the ball. They won the toss at their own 27. Andy Johnson, left side. And he runs into John Banizak on that right side of the Steeler defense after a gain of a yard, a yard and a half, giving second down and eight. I guess it would be a pretty obvious observation, but you're early in the year, first game. A lot of the guys are just kind of really kind of get it all in shape. Lance Swan, for example, has been in camp for two weeks. So now you're going to really see a little bit of that conditioning, that early conditioning. See who can come through there and hold it together. Second and eight, Rogan rolling out. What was that? Well, at least he didn't hit one of the Steelers. Did it? Well, I don't even want to. Who was he throwing to? Well, Francis was in the area. Cunningham was semi in the area. I see. There goes Sam Bam. Third down and eight. Rogan clearly struggling. Not he had a, just one good half in the preseason. Not an excessively hot night, but it is a little humid. Temperature started in the low 80s at, game, at the kickoff time. So it's much cooler now. Third and eight. Cunningham is in motion. That first formation tonight. Grogan going for Morgan. And Wagner was there. He'll be booed, but he could not throw it. Good coverage by Wagner. And it'll be fourth down. And Eddie Hare, who has been very active in his first NFL game, the rookie from Tulsa, comes out to do the punting for New England. Lynn Swan positions himself between his 30 and 35 yard line. There's Lynn. Back in 74 he had over a 14 yard average and was the last Steeler to return a punt for a touchdown that also in 74. Fair catch called for by Swan at the 30. So the Steelers will have their first offensive possession of the overtime. Special team coach asked Swanee if he had ever run back punts before, Swanee said no. He said, don't try it tonight. <laughs> Bradshaw limps into the huddle. <laughs> and again, the band. Here comes the band. Fires up and the Steelers can't hear a thing. That's one of your short tunes. Football, 31 yard line. Bradshaw puts Swan out to the right. Setbacks remain. Franco Harris and Sidney Thornton. Harris gets the call and finds a little opening, ducks his head and gets an extra couple of yards out of it. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. 
Harris now 23 attempts, 57 yards. Tough New England defense. And the world's champions are working on them. I think that means something in these overtime games. I really do. The fact that they've won. Second and six. Swan is right. Stallworth is left. Sidney Thornton. There you and go. he was the man that tied it up. And he's looking good tonight. Inside New England territory. Close to the 48-yard line. Tripped up there by Tim Fox. He really has come on to have a big night in the late going early on. No, but we need them most. Look at him there. That big hole opening for him. Here, another fine block by 57, Sam Davis. And it appeared to me 57 on the other side overran it. That was Steve Nelson. He tried to cut up on the inside and catch it and ran right past the runner. First and 10. Ball inside the 49. Franco Harris, Thornton with a good block. Harris has some running room. And a good open field tackle by Mike Haynes, but not until Franco Harris had picked up five yards. It'll be second and five. Here's the time to get one of those feelings done. Don't you get the feeling that Pittsburgh is the team now that's alive, that's coming on? I thought they would do it before the regular season. I mean, before the, re the end of the regular uh, game regulation game. But uh, I see them moving around there. They're getting together. You mentioned we both talk, all, all of us talk about the injuries, but they seem to have something working for them right now. Yeah. Second and five, the ball at the 43. Franco Harris inside. Uh -huh. Good block again go. by Davis. And Harris breaks it down to the 33 yard line. That was a beautiful piece of execution. You had a perfect view of the whole opening and the way Franco. Look at it again. Amazing quality, I think, that Franco has. Uh, Look at that. Uh, he, he in a big game you're going to put him in there and uh, he's going to come through for you so a big game whatever this is a key situation he seems to always come up with one uh, getting close down there now Matt Ball Barr in. the place kicker rookie from Penn State missed the opening conversion tonight on the Steelers first touchdown two kickoffs were poor Ball inside the 33 yard line of New England all tied at 13 and Tisha just left the late movie Franco Harris, right side. Strung him out. Out of bounds, stops the clock. Inside the 32. Steve Nelson there again, 57. Great performance by Nelson tonight, all over the field. Hunt was over there as was Hawkins. Man, they all strung that thing out, you're right. Just back to the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be second down and 10. And we're going to see the designated pass rusher, they call him up here, Tony McGee, come into the lineup, number 78. New England thinking pass from Bradshaw. Stay in their 3-4, however. Lots of time. This is Sidney Thornton. Look at oh, this oh, big oh. man. And Thornton short of the first down close to the 25 where it's going to be third down and a long three just bowled them over who he hit Tony McGee a shot Tony McGee weighs 260 and Thornton goes 230 now that's going to give you at least in terms of physics quite a violent collision good protection that offensive line that time and he did run over him, didn't he and a good call third and four I bet you nobody's pulling harder for them to make a first down than Matt Barr. <laughs> Get it closer. Well, we're going to see a field goal attempt now on fourth down. Thornton short of the first down. Well, and what pressure to put on a youngster in his first pro football game. This yeah. is Matt Barr, the sixth round draft pick from Penn State. Beat out an eight-year veteran of the Steelers, Roy Girella. He's kicked them a lot further than this for the Nittany Lions. If Joe Paterno is watching. 41-yard attempt. And, and New England calls timeout. <laughs> they want him well, to think right. about that's it a little right. longer. Old tactic. Not a bad timeout. Understandable tactic, frequently used. You know, he broke most of his brother's records at Penn State. One of them for most in a season. He kicked 22 yard, 22 field goals. 
year ago. What was the longest one? Do you have that figure? 48 there? yards of Penn State. 48. Yep. He missed one earlier here tonight from 43 yards out. He got little foot into the football on his kickoffs. On the one he missed. But maybe now, having scored one, going in conference. Oh, it'll be a 41-yard attempt. For one, our wonderful opportunity, don't you think? <laughs> the uh, healthy thing for Chuck Noll, I'll tell you. Craig Colquitt is the holder. So I don't think we'll have any gymnastics. A respected coach. By the holder. On Mike, hard there. Mike Home Webster is snapping the ball. Chuck Noll. <laughs> Played a little over five minutes of overtime. Tied at 13. This could undo it. 61,000 fans are still here and they're on their feet. Right through the middle. I think he's got it. You betcha. Right through the rookie middle. from Penn State has won the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Matt Barr, 41 yard field goal. You saw a quick shot of Ron Earhart. His head dropped. <laughs> as Chuck Knoll has won his 100th game as a professional football coach. What a game for that man to have won and for his team to have won. Broken down by injury. So many of them you almost couldn't count them. The game itself became a recital of who was hurt, who was not in there. Yet, compellingly, they held together. As you look at the field goal again, and the young man who missed a point after and kicked so poorly in the early going winds up the hero. He That's does. the way he did it for Joe Paterno. Uh, he doesn't care much about pressure. Good placement there by Colquitt. Yep. He got the foot into it there. He knows. Look at that. He says, you did it, you little rascal. Gosh <laughs> dang. Hot dog. Kickers love kickers. <laughs> yeah, they do. They are a special breed. All just... right. Once again, the final score, Pittsburgh 16, New England 13 in overtime. Be sure to join us this Thursday night. 8.30 Eastern for a special Thursday night edition of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The NFC Western Division champion Los Angeles Rams take on the AFC Western Division champion Denver Broncos. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines.